come back and try that again, I'll push you through the wall. The highway is quite safe now, madam. I've seen them on their way. Would you believe it? This coffee bunch has reached the third round of the FA Cup. I know. Whole town's talking about it. Smarten them up a bit. I want to be real proud when we walk out to inspect the pitch at Wembley. Well, I know you can fit the whole team off the peg, and I won't have to flog me striker to pay the bill. That's him in the safari suit. Mustard, isn't he? Shall I make the check out to... Uh... Dunn and Company? Yes, sir. Hey, boss, boss! We've drawn Arsenal away. Never mind, sir. Better luck next year. Pull him back. fielding 11 of the 12 men who won the FA Cup. The absentee is Willie Young who has a slight injury, although he is among the subs. Steve Walford wears number six. He came on as substitute during the FA Cup final towards the end. But Arsenal with the 4-4-2 formation basically which was successful last season. And the Liverpool manager Bob Paisley sticks to the team that clinched the championship with the record 68 points. Also a 4-4-2 lineup. And those names obviously ring fear around the rest of the first division because Liverpool look formidable even on the team catching. The two number sevens present an interesting contrast at the start of this new season. Liam Brady of Arsenal had a hand in all three goals in the FA Cup final and was voted the player of the year by his fellow professionals. While the football writer's choice as the footballer of the year was Kay Dalgleish of Liverpool who since he joined the club two years ago, making his debut by the way for them in the charity shield against Manchester United, has yet to miss a match.
summer weather, meaning that Bob Paisley can discard the jacket. Among his substitutes this afternoon will be one of his new signings, A.B. Cohen from Israel, among the Liverpool five. Indeed, uh, Frank McGarvey, the other newcomer from St Mirren, can't even get a place on the bench today. That's how good the Liverpool squad is. And as you can see, among the Arsenal substitutes, John Hollins, number 12, who was signed from Queen's Park Rangers during the summer. The referee is George Courtney from County Durham one of our senior panel of FIFA referees, one of the top four. And Arsenal to kick off. Just for a moment, it's almost like cup final day all over again. Brian Talbot to Liam Brady. Arsenal playing left to right. Sammy Nelson, Phil Neal who slipped, Stapleton to Brady. And the tackle coming in from Terry McDermott. I wonder if he's going to shadow Brady. And vice versa, perhaps, too, when McDermott breaks. Stapleton. This time it's Case who got back. O'Leary and Johnson. Oh, and Johnson has got through here against O'Leary. Good recovery by the centre half, helped out by Walford. O'Leary was just caught cold for a second by the pace of David Johnson. Stapleton, good flick to Sunderland. Talbot to Ricks. to Alan Kennedy here's Ray Kennedy that was a good ball from Hansen to Johnson Walford Sunis number 11 for Liverpool that's a good ball it's Phil Neal who saw what was on and found McDermott. Here's Neal again. Stapleton got back. Now it's Ricks. Nelson. Ricks. Sometimes players and managers try to play this match down, but the fans won't let them do this this afternoon. There's a fine atmosphere inside Wembley. Lots of reputations are at stake. O'Leary's head up. Neil. McDermott running and Brady trying to track him back. Dalgleish is in there on the near post. Dangerous. Johnson! Oh, what a miss! The first chance, and it was created for Johnson by Ken Dalgleish. One of his favourite positions, that. On the near post side of the penalty area, and pulled the ball back, and Johnson, who had to take it on the volley, not always easy, even at point-blank range, skied his shot. looking for Sunderland, it was Hansen's header, here's Brady. Picks out Rice. Talbot and Price both down this side as well, that's Price. Here's Brady again. Both teams have been abroad. 
pre-season. Both have done well also. Liverpool in Germany, in Denmark. Arsenal have played in the tournament in Holland. That's Brady. Well run by Seamus, he's got two to his right. Jimmy Case on the far side with Dalglish making a great run just inside number seven. And O'Leary once again. Got his body in the way when it mattered. But Liverpool seem to have found their rhythm quickly. Phil Thompson, number four, on the near post. Dalglish behind him. Ray Kennedy. Walford. Oh, Dalglish almost there, and again O'Leary. Sunderland's header. Ricks to Stapleton, a bit too quick, a bit too tight, Neil, oh what a good ball, Dalglish, Johnson in the centre, and Jennings to turn it round, and Dalglish, symptomatic of the way Liverpool have started the match, full of urgency and touch already. Notice that Jennings is wearing gloves, a further sign that there may be a little bit of grease on the surface. Well, that was Talbot's uh, mistimed clearance. Let's come back to Souness. Soon a shot. Oh, and Jennings, just for a moment, almost caught by surprise, but able to make the save nonetheless. Stapleton. Price. That's offside against Sunderland in the centre. scored the winning goal in the FA Cup final, Alan Sunderland. No extra time, by the way, today. If this Charity Shield match is drawn up to 90 minutes, the sides hold the trophy for six months each. That's what happened the last time Liverpool Cheers. played in the Charity Shield against Manchester United two years ago. Liverpool making their ninth appearance in this match and Arsenal are making a record tenth appearance in the Charity Shield this afternoon. Neil for Liverpool. Here's Talbot. Sort of spacey lights straight ahead of him. And he's picked out Sammy Nelson on the far side. Arsenal have got four players waiting and it goes straight to Case. I wonder if Liverpool can exploit the space that Nelson has left. Ricks has dropped back into it. Johnson. David Johnson finished up last season with something like 18 goals in all competitions and this was a player who at one time appeared to be finding it hard to get into the side but he knuckled down and kept his place and he's begun this match with plenty of verve. Brady working hard to push Arsenal forward, it's been mostly Liverpool in the opening quarter of an hour, here's Walford, Nelson, Brady's got Rice the other way, Alan 
he came in fast but here's Sunderland well dealt with by Phil Thompson oh Nelson missing out and McDermott away Dalgleish through the centre number seven Walford with him O'Leary hooking it out Liverpool looks so smooth when they come forward almost as if last season never finished but here comes Sunderland for Arsenal with Alan Kennedy oh he's found a way through and missed now Kennedy thought he was fouled there he wasn't very pleased either with the other defenders I don't think but Alan Sunderland got away and that was a clean scoring chance for Arsenal so a golden opportunity missed now at either end Johnson early on for Liverpool and Sunderland the cup final match winner wide for Arsenal Liverpool again have got plenty of players forward seven in all here's Souness Case set that back oh and well struck Jennings was right in line but David Johnson is finding a lot of room and has made several important contributions already Jennings made it look easy though the way he caught it forward but the pass gave it little chance here's Johnson Souness Dalglish Ray Kennedy tries to play the one two and does Dalglish oh good save by Jennings and you wondered at times in that move just how Dalglish stayed in with a shooting chance O'Leary was shutting him down yet somehow having played the one two with Ray Kennedy he still squeezed his shot in and Jennings had to be at his most alert. Alan Kennedy. Ray Kennedy was up and behind him. Johnson came in. And missed a second presentable chance. As Alan Kennedy crossed there, Ray Kennedy brought the defenders in and Johnson coming in behind him had the header. Liverpool bench must be well pleased with the number of chances they've created already. Even the supporters of professionals, as Laurie McMenemy said on Cup Final Day, they've been to Wembley so often. Sunderland came off nicely there. Oh, ball offside. Dermot's so busy. So is Dalglish. Blocked by Walford. Alan Kennedy. Walford is there again. Alan Kennedy again. Showing there that he's happy to use either foot, the Liverpool fullback. Hit the first one with the left, which Walford blocked, and the second one with the right, going just over. Steve Walford making two timely interceptions in that Liverpool attack. It could also be said that uh, with uh, the first half now and it's last 10 minutes that um, Arsenal have played at a slower pace than Liverpool it's a very warm afternoon I wonder if perhaps that might matter in the second half we shall see Floated crosses for O'Leary. Oh, and Clements kept it out somehow from Stapleton. 
Well, that was a fine save. Stapleton's header, throwing himself at the cross from O'Leary. And Clements, having parried, scrambled back and kept the ball out of the goal. Two chances now, they've carved out. Here's Stapleton who had the header. Brady. Nelson. Nelson again. Hansen was in the way, then Sooners. Free kick given. For the foul. Sammy Nelson feeding into the attack very intelligently and not always down the touchline either where we normally see him. He's coming to the inside left position several times. Brady with the kick for Arsenal. That's Price! And at the far post, Sunderland couldn't quite reach it. Price who knocked it back across. an absorbing match because Arsenal have now come back into things in the last five minutes or so but here come Liverpool with McDermott oh I say that's a terrific goal Pat Jennings could do nothing about it and McDermott scores tremendous virtuosity He's been making those runs throughout the first half. He was prepared to strike that from way out. Low in the corner, plus Jennings. And Terry McDermott gives Liverpool the lead in the charity shield. A lead they deserve for the way they've played, without any doubt at all. Look how pleased he is with the finish. And the fans too, of course. But funnily enough, the goal coming just when Arsenal seem to be edging their way back into the match. So Liverpool lead 1-0. Six minutes left in the first half. Brady looks for Stapleton. And that's a goal kick. Well, Liverpool scored 84 goals alone in the first division last season. That's their first goal of many, I would think, in all competitions this season. Funnily enough, Liverpool players have won the BBC Goal of the Season for the last three years. McDermott was the winner two years ago. Soon as won it last year and Ray Kennedy this year. A quiet end to what was a really eventful first half, and the main event was a quite tremendous goal with which to start the new season, scored by Terry McDermott after 38 minutes. Rifled the shot in from outside the penalty area, and that just testified how well Liverpool played in the first half. Arsenal created two good chances, but having said that, the sweet football came from Liverpool. One of the big talking points among the crowd inside the stadium at half-time is that fine goal by Terry McDermott, leading by that single goal. No substitutes at half-time, so it's as you were. Here's Thompson for Liverpool. Case to Neil. trying to reach him oh and Johnson coming in was just put off by Rice I think he might actually have pushed him but uh, a 
again Liverpool breaking down that right hand side with McDermott who seems to time those runs so well the opposition must know what he's about and yet every time he seems to get a yard ahead this is O'Leary for Arsenal still trailing by a goal to nil Brady Challenged there by Dalgleish. But here's Rice. Stapleton. Time to turn. Well, it could be an opportune moment uh, as Frank Stapleton shoots wide. A good effort that to mention the man who won't be wearing the Arsenal number no. nine shirt any longer. The sad retirement from injury of Malcolm McDonald, who I gather didn't come to the match today. It will be sadly missed not just by Arsenal but by football fans everywhere. Without him, Arsenal will persevere with the successful Stapleton-Sunderland combination up front. Torbert. Nelson. Brady. Lovely change of pace by Brady. Sunderland. Still Sunderland. Well gathered by Clements. knowing that Arsenal were a side last season respected for the way they battled as well as for the way they played so they can't be complacent about a one goal lead here there's Hansen to Ray Kennedy good running again by Milton. look at the space he found there He's trying to put Dalgleish in. It wasn't one of his better finishes, but it was a typical Liverpool move, that, in every sense. McDermott finding room again, making space for himself, and then playing Dalgleish into one of his favourite positions, just to his feet, inside the penalty area, moving towards near post. from Sunis, knocked on by Dalgleish for McDermott, oh McDermott's in and well Brian Torbett will be relieved as the two of them chased in there, Torbett lost his bearings rather McDermott was in for a shot but it wasn't a very powerful one and Jennings anyway had made the ground and was breathing down his neck free kick to Arsenal fouled by Thompson surprise me if the pace of the game drops in the second half because it's so warm here's Brady oh well played Talbot Ray Kennedy back in defence and so was Sunis poor ball from him though and Liverpool in the end won it by sheer weight of numbers Alan Hansen Johnson Alan Kennedy and three players making a run from a deep position. O'Leary's got to get this. He hasn't. It's McDermott who tried the most <laughs> unique of lobs because he only had a split second to decide what to do. Jennings was off his line. Now Arsenal can break here with Ricks, can they? Not much support up front. Only Sunderland and he was beaten by Hansen. Who comes all the way and finds Delgleish who's onside. Is absolutely outstanding finishing by the footballer of the year, Kenny Dalglish. What a goal! That was absolutely world class. Alan Hansen from defence made it possible by keeping cool and bringing the ball through himself, defeating any attempt to play the offside game. Dalglish, who went on, made a real monkey out of Paul Walford, who he left on his backside, and then the clinical finish passed back Jennings. Arsenal nil, Liverpool two, and Dalglish 
putting a marvellous goal alongside the one that McDermott scored earlier. There might have been a slight question mark about offside, but certainly Dalglish wasn't waiting for a flag. Brady, he knew exactly what he was going to do. John Hollins comes on for his first appearance for his new club in this country. David Price is the man going on. John Hollins, who's spent his career with London clubs, Chelsea and Queen's Park Rangers, now Arsenal. Hansen, though, for Liverpool, who are dictating the match. Case. This man Dalglish, he's been with Liverpool two seasons in which he scored 55 goals and he started this season exactly as he finished last. Quite the most exciting player I would think to come out of Scotland for a very long time. by no means impregnable after what happened in the cup final but Arsenal let it be said are going to have to produce something quite out of the ordinary now they're going to get this match back out of Liverpool's grasp because Liverpool are doing everything right Johnson Dalglish oh it's come to McDermott it's three this is absolutely magnificent stuff from Liverpool say it started with an error by Liam Brady the way the move built up but Liverpool punished it in the only way they know how finally when the ball came to McDermott he put it underneath Pat Jennings body but again the build up was devastating and the finish absolutely precise The Arsenal end is silenced by Terry McDermott, who scores his second goal of the match. And Liverpool now have turned the charity shield into an exhibition. And at the moment, it's a devastating one. Again, Dalglish involved in the move. enjoying himself as much as anybody coming out of defence there he is again Dalglish is back there as well what a team performance this is becoming by Liverpool Terry McDermott now is on a hat-trick and there hasn't been one of those in the charity shield since 1954 when Ronnie Allen scored one for West Bromwich Albion against Wolves Liverpool fans have enjoyed this second half performance particularly here's Brady Stapleton giving it back to him. Hansen across and Brady could get one back here. And what a save by the England goalkeeper. Even when Arsenal did threaten and Brady beat three players. Struck the ball well with his left foot. Ray Clements right on his game. His concentration sharp. Turned the ball round. Ricks, Young goes in, here's Hollins, slipped, there's Brady, Arsenal threatening to get one back but the poor pass from Brady only sets up McDermott, Souness, Dalglish, there's a 
lost all confidence about Liverpool that makes you almost frightened about the season to come. Well, Pays, he doesn't like his team being talked about as favourites, but what else can you say when they play like this? They still want more. Look at Joe Fagan. Stapleton to Brady. Sunderland. Ricks wanting it out on the right wing where he spent most of the second half. Brady's in there again. So Leary's cross, Hansen in the way. Lovely exchange of passes out of defence by Liverpool. Soonest to Johnson, and the others are making ground on this near side. Now McDermott's up there, slipping for a hat trick. Still Johnson. It's going to come to Graham Soonest, and Jennings got a hand to it. Otherwise, it was four. Arsenal were taken apart again. And soon as well, it was almost like a practice game the time he had to line his shot up. But Pat Jennings, professional to the last, even at three down, got his right hand out and turned it round. Brian Talbot throws the shin pads away. A hot day and the pace perhaps telling now on one or two players. Well, he can try again with that corner, Jimmy Case. Neil, and it was uh, John Hollins, corner again. Taken quickly and short, Neil. Alan Kennedy's shot, Hollins in the way. And now a break for Ricks. Alan Kennedy, who had that shot at goal, was the player in the way when Arsenal tried to counter-attack. That's a sign of the Liverpool fitness. Walford. Thompson to Neil. Even in defence they get applause. England players combining. today, the FA Charity Shield. But here's Sunderland looking for a late consolation for us. Stapleton, now perhaps Sunderland can get one, and he does. And a great roar of relief from the Arsenal end of the stadium. Because at least that goal has made the journey worthwhile. Alan Sunderland, the scorer taking the return pass from Stapleton and a good finish but he might well be wondering what would have happened had he scored early in the match when he was clean through because as the Arsenal bench know only too well that goal is a mere crumb of comfort coming just three or four minutes from the end
so a late flourish here from Arsenal. This is David O'Leary. Brady. Now, can they stretch Liverpool again here? They can, and Stapleton is in there with a header which should all, honestly, have made it 3-2. It was a good cross that by Ricks, driven in, and Stapleton had a free header which he put straight at Ray Clements. Sun still shining brightly in the eyes of the players. That was O'Leary jumping with Johnson. That was Willie Young. Neil. Sunis finding case. Now Liverpool have got uh, three in the centre waiting for a cross. Johnson's at the far post with the header back. Away by Rice. It's going to come to Phil Thompson. Brady was there first. But it did come to Ray Kennedy. And now to Neil. Case. Ray Kennedy sneaking up on the far side. Dalgleish is in on the near post in front of Rice. I think Liverpool's touch has deserted them at last in the last few minutes with the game safely in their grasp. Haven't needed to play with quite the uh, fierceness that they showed us earlier. Well, this was the FA Charity Shield, but despite the handshakes, there was precious little charity shown by the Football League champions Liverpool. They took the match over in the first half hour, just had the one goal to show for it at half time, but in the second half, they were absolutely devastating in patches. Dominating the match with their fine teamwork, putting to it some clinical finishing. Dalgleish scored one, McDermott scored two, and Arsenal got a late consolation through Alan Sunderland. But if this is any guide, and maybe it's too early to draw too many conclusions about the new season, Liverpool, as we expected, will be every bit as formidable in the months that lie ahead, because they seem to have snapped neatly back into that well-rehearsed rhythm almost at once. So much to admire about their performance, and Arsenal today were second best, and at times completely outclassed. Liverpool 3, Arsenal 1, and it's Phil Thompson, his first day at Wembley as Liverpool captain who will lead the side up to receive their mementos Phil Thompson who was born in Liverpool his family still live in Kirby and he was a supporter on the cop as a kid where his brother still stands in fact to watch all the matches a Liverpool boy at heart and a proud moment for him It may only be the charity shield, but it's a sign of things to come, surely, for the new season, to see Liverpool going forward to receive a trophy. Stan Cullis, formerly the very successful manager of the great Wolverhampton Wanderers side in the 50s, presents the Charity Shield to Phil Thompson of Liverpool. And Thompson's gesture to the supporters seems to say there's more to come after this. Oh, the pain 
beat Pat Jennings on his right side. Collins. Ball for Nelson. Who comfortably puts it in. Sunderland. Nicely done. Cherry committed. So oh, Sunderland falling late and the referee gives the penalty. Corbett has the chance to put the London team ahead from the spot. And just as he's done, I think. Tremendous applause for David Harvey. The penalty was a little bit off the ground, admittedly. But even so, he really flung himself to his right and was completely in a horizontal position when he pushed to the side. And as I said, I believe that justice has been seen to be done.
Good evening. It's nice to be back. In a moment, the news at 5.45, followed by the Muppets with Dudley Moore at 5 past 6. At 6.35, Crossroads, and at 7, it's George and Mildred. I'm winning, Mildred. What are you doing? I'm playing with myself. And now it's time for the first of those programmes, the news from ITN, your newscaster, Leonard Parkin, a time check for you. It's exactly a quarter to six. The news at 5.45 with Leonard Parkin. The battle for bargain basement flights to Europe. The Labour Party inquiry, another victory for the left-wingers. The Rovers return and the other ITV regulars are back. Good evening, again. It's good to be back again, so let me simply say, let's get on with it. Yeah. 
latest captain Phil Thompson leading out the league leaders Liverpool and a really great crowd here at Highbury today attracted by some of the best known names and faces in the business in fact 17 of the 24 players on show today are internationals and for three of them, less than 48 hours since they played for England at Wembley on Thursday night. All Liverpool players, Ray Clements, the goalkeeper, who was not seriously troubled by the Bulgarians. A midfield man, Ray Kennedy. And the man, as I say, who captained his country that night, Phil Thompson, who, as you know, is also captain of the Liverpool side today. Well, here's the Arsenal team they face today without Liam Brady, whose ankle injury also forced him to miss the Republic of Ireland's midweek defeat against Northern Ireland. But Alan Sunderland returns to the attack after missing the last four games with hamstring trouble and Steve Gadding and David Price are in the midfield with John Hollins fit again the substitute and the Liverpool side they're at full strength and that really says just all that you need to know about them except that they come here today for the first time this season protecting their position as leaders in the first division though they've not won here at Highbury in the last five seasons the referee today it's Leicester Shafter of South Devon It's Liverpool then kicking off in a change strip of white shirts and black shorts attacking the goal to our left. They've won their last five Liverpool that charge that's taken them to the top of the first division. David O'Leary playing it back. And of course in that Liverpool side today, Kenny Dalglish. It's his 100th league game for Liverpool today. He's not missed a league game since he joined them from Southampton. In fairness, uh, he did say rather ruefully to me before the start, and have in fairness been missing from one or two of them in terms of play. Hanson back to Ray Clance.
a little bit by his Arsenal side. Neil. What a good break again by McDermott on side and clear of them all. And he hit the post. What a tremendous break by McDermott. Arsenal haven't got it away yet. Price now thumping it into touch. McDermott who scored twice in the charity shield against Arsenal at Wembley at the very start of the season. What a good break. Well timed. Right the way through. Past Jennings. Against the far post. And nobody able from Liverpool to follow up and put it in. Straight that time into the arms of Jennings from David Johnson. And somebody let McDermott go free there. And it's... Of Liverpool. 
and really have not as yet made a single clear opening. I think John Devine's had a very good game, the Arsenal right back in place of Pat Rice, although uh, Pat, I think, will be ready to play in one of the Arsenal sides after injury next weekend. But certainly overall, I would think a disappointing first half, and maybe things will warm up a little bit in terms of it being a contest in the second. The half-time score then at Highbury, Arsenal nil, Liverpool nil, and we'll be back with the second half. A fine scene there, and a half-time score nil-nil, as we now welcome you back to Highbury for the second half of this game, with Arsenal kicking off and attacking the goal to our left. Arsenal, in fact, uh, I mentioned at the start that Liverpool have won their last five games. Uh, Arsenal's record of late is not to be sniffed at. They've only lost one of their last 13, and that was at Crystal Palace. Lost two at home this season to Ipswich and to Wolves. Divine with a long and an interesting cross there if it comes as far as... But in fact, Jimmy Case made sure that it didn't. And so Arsenal get a corner in the opening minute of the second half. So David Price with the corner for Arsenal. Jenny Olaho. Clements coming for it. Punching it away, but not very far. Stapleton maybe with a chance of getting the shot in. Seeing that one late is Torbert let fly. To Clements grabbing it. As Neil plays it for Case. Only Johnson up there really for Liverpool. Willie Young winning that in the air. Torbert coming back so busily.
Anderson. Neil. Quickly filling that space. Case. Deep cross this time towards David Johnson. Just flicked off the top of his head by young John Devine. Here's Graham Ricks. Staple and up. Sunderland and up. Devine's going up as well. And Torbett's in there too. Played for Stapleton by Torbett. Devine. And Jones. Chances 
against formidable Liverpool. In fact, when you think about it, it's only for a couple of snatches early in the second half, so Dre Clement's been in any trouble, and there's that Liverpool barrier between Graham Ricks, Brian Talbot, and the goal. Played, though, for Sammy Nelson to drive it there, just wide of Ray Clements' goal. Especially built there for the press photographers to get a new angle instead of just the ones behind the goal. said it wasn't. The referee already beginning to look at his watch with about a half a minute to go, just under. Liverpool have scored only once in their last five visits, visits here. And uh, just a few seconds away from not adding to that record today, but I think they'll be more than happy with the point. It's Case. Steve Highway there just getting to his feet. The last few seconds of formality. The final whistle and a goal is drawn. And in fact, uh, in the second half, it livened up a good deal and it was Liverpool who made the openings and it was David Johnson and Kenny Dalglish who might have made more of the chances that came their way. Arsenal a little flurry early in the second half, but with just those two men up for uh, Sunderland and Stapleton, they were always battling against the odds against the Liverpool defence. So, as the players come off, at a game that overall I think has been slightly disappointing when so many had come here expecting a really great tussle. Ray Clements with a smile and a handshake for his opposing goalkeeper Pat Jennings. Two men with blank score sheets today, they'll be happy at any rate. And a final score at Highbury, which is uh, Arsenal nil, Liverpool nil. Well, flashes of excitement and skill, but disappointing that there were no goals there. I suppose Liverpool were satisfied with their point, though, but the one that got away meant that they lost their place at the top of the first division table. Manchester United going back there after their 5 0 win against Norwich. Liverpool, as you can see, a second. Crystal Palace held at home by Coventry, third. Then Arsenal, Forest, beaten at Derby. And a bit surprising to find Middlesbrough there in sixth position. But there's no doubt that Liverpool are beginning to look more like their old selves. And afterwards, I spoke to their captain, Phil Thompson, at the end of what's been a memorable week for him. Yes, um, after Wednesday night. Thursday night. Even. No, I mean Wednesday night, you know, the game's off and you prepare yourself for a game. Yeah. And then you find that it's all off and you have to go through it again. And I had a lot of trouble, you know, with the family having to stay down. So you're trying to arrange for them to stay somewhere. But um, it's a bit of a run around involved. Yeah. But uh, it was tiring in a way, but we had a good result on Thursday. Yes. And that was made it all the better. You know, we had a bad result. And it was the first time you'd captained your country, of course, on Thursday. Yeah, I was really proud. Really. Tell me about that. Well, I didn't know anything about it. I never even gave it a thought on Wednesday night. Just as somebody said, oh, Kevin's not playing. I said, oh, I don't believe that, you know. But I heard it. And when I rang my brother up, he said, oh, he said, you could be captain. I said, oh, oh, I said, ah, it's a possibility. And it wasn't until Thursday morning, the boss came up to me, I was talking to Phil Neal, and he said, you're captain. I couldn't believe it, you know, 
I was really made up, very proud. In fact, I think your mum was a bit disappointed that, that Kevin went back. With, with I know, so. yeah. I don't know whether she likes Kevin better than me, you know. Every time she sees him, it's hugs all around and everything. And uh, he's like a second mother uh, to Kevin. But uh, it's ever since he's been at Liverpool, he's fabulous like that. Never forgets anybody. We're a fabulous bloke. Yeah. And then you came here today and you knew it was going to be a tough... But a lot of people wondered how you'd react after, you know, less than 48 hours after playing at Wembley. I mean, how did you find it? Yeah, but... Uh, being Liverpool, we've always been under pressure every season. Uh, we have games playing twice a week and everything, so it's really nothing new. You've got to play the games, so you know, we realised that. We knew it was going to be a tough game. And you might even have had a penalty, I suppose, right at the end. Well, we were very disappointed over that. Kenny was saying before, the lad behind him never even got anywhere near the ball. He said he just caught all of them and that was it. The chance was gone. Uh, for a lad like Kenny, you know, he, he would have been round and stuck down away. Well, I think when you look at it again and again, it's still, you still really can't make up your mind completely. David O'Leary told me last night that he thought it wasn't a penalty. He's the Arsenal player chasing Kenny Dalglish there. Kenny thought it was a penalty. Referee has got to give a decision. And he decided no penalty.
Jack Curl, Stapleton! Beautifully clipped up by Ricks. A man full on the ball. and swing it in towards Jennings. And McQueen heads in! A lot of accusing faces in the Arsenal defence as they come out in the eighth minute, a goal down. McElroy's corner, watch for McQueen. Jennings doesn't get anywhere near this. Talbot. Wilkins was being held, but he still got the pass away, and Macari is chasing. But O'Leary there, and Rice back to Jennings. Stapleton 
Sunderland turned that nicely for Ricks. Ricks in here with a real chance, but didn't make anything of it. Ricks, a player of so much skill, but finishing not his strongest point. Some good bustling here by Wilkins. And back to Houston. Wilkins again. And that's a good cross from Wilkins. Young beat Jordan to it. But it was a good ball from Wilkins. Thomas, signal with the right hand, in swinger, and McCurry's header just glances off the outside of the post. Brady. Stapleton had made a run to the left, taking the pass now. Ricks playing the quick one in, and Sunderland over the top, beautiful build-up. And the final touch was the only poor contribution to a very good move indeed. Make progress down the line with a series of throws. Makari, clever bit of work, Jordan looking for the header. who got the header in on, or McElroy who got the header in on the far side, Jordan who applied the finishing touch from an offside position. Nicol, Kari, Koppel, good save, but it was a very good swift bit of work by Manchester United, just three touches and suddenly Jennings was under pressure. To Nicol, Wilkins wanting to take it over again. Challenge by Talbot didn't work. And Wilkins finds Nickel who'd run on well. And there are a lot of men in there again. Thomas can score! Well, he could have scored if the goalkeeper had not been Pat Jennings. He was clear in there and he hit it hard and true. But Pat Jennings showed why he holds the record number of caps for Northern Ireland. Just watch the agility and the speed of the reflexes here suddenly breaks to Thomas hard and that right hand goes up Mickey Thomas denied his fifth goal of the season now more action perhaps for Jennings no he gets a bit of relief here from the referee's whistle Nichols throw by O'Leary back again by Nichol now Brady under this Jordan nice little touch for Wilkins and Wilkins Good early ball, and it's Thomas who benefits. Jennings has come out and got a hand to it, but Jordan will score, and that is 2 0. All made by a beautiful bit of vision by Ray Wilkins. Seen very early, there was the outside of the right foot to a difficult pass in the air. Thomas kept his head well by this time Jennings is off his line coming to meet him manages to get a hand to Thomas's shot but Jordan has been running on hoping for just that kind of consolation Joe Jordan kicks off and away we go always anxious to get on with it this familiar hustle bustle style never giving their opponents time to settle and get their balance and poise in their own half of the field and that's a good attempt which was not really very far wide at the end of it. Some good improvisation by Manchester United in the penalty areas. Cross played in. And when the ball drops here, it really doesn't look as though there's anything on. But Jordan found something, and he troubled Jennings. And Ricks up to Brady. Brady away from the tackle. Divine a wallop oh it was a good one too John Devine close to his first goal in the league it's quite hard enough it isn't easy to move the ball along the ground Wilkins now has put Nickel in and Nickel has won it well from Brady with Arsenal's free kick. It's a 
nasty one, and Bailey just with a hand. Got down very quickly. Makari. And Thomas has made a break into a good position. And played it across. And Jordan has won it back from Devine. And he's then bowled over from behind. And that is a penalty. An incautious challenge from behind with the ball wide up towards the edge of the area. And just that little nudge in the back of the knees was enough to give Manchester United their chance to go 3-0 in front. Sammy McElroy will take the kick. Pat Jennings, who saved a few facing him. He's not going to save that one. Perfect penalty. Jennings, no chance whatsoever. 3 0. Worth seeing again. Beautifully placed. Sir Knight's 3 0. And if Arsenal had thoughts of coming back into the game, McElroy's penalty has completely destroyed them. His second goal of the season. And that, a very happy scoreline for United and their fans. So Leary needing a bit of attention. It's going to be a stretcher job. Well, that really would be a blow for Arsenal. They desperately didn't want to lose this game. To stay in touch with Liverpool. If they lose the points and lose O'Leary for a period, it will be double disaster. At Wembley in the cup final, played just the last four minutes, but was on for all that drama at the end. Mary looking distinctly unhappy. Thomas, a good cross. Once again, the class of the Irish goalkeeper. Superb reflexes, 34 years old, but watch how fast he gets down when Makari glances this header. A big left hand like a spade. Hunt gives them a useful margin between them and Arsenal. And the final whistle goes to signal a 3-0 victory by Manchester United and a signal that it looks as though the first division championship race has turned into a two-horse race. Goals from Jordan, McQueen and McElroy from the penalty spot making it 3-0 to Manchester United. It's very nearly midnight. I mean, it, it would be nearly midnight, but time stopped and I, I just don't know what to do. I mean, I don't, we can't be stuck in 79 forever. <laughs> Wait a minute. I know. A prayer to Lord Thames. Dear Lord Thames of the massive wallet, we love you dearly. Please let us have 1980. We promise to be good little boys and never to strike again. Please take us into 1980. Please. Please. No. Right. If we can't go into 1980, you're not going either. Take this.
me do the hip hip hop and you don't stop the rockin' to the bang bang boogie Say up jump the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie to beat Now what you hear is not a test, I'm rapping to the beat And me, the groove, and my friends are gonna try to move your feet you see, I am Wonder Mike and I like to sing hello Up to the black, to the white, the red, and the brown, and the purple, and the yellow But first, I gotta bang bang the boogie to the boogie Say up jump the boogie to the bang bang boogie Let's rock you don't stop, rock the rhythm that I make your body rock Well, so far you heard my voice, but I brought two friends along And next on the mic is my man Hank, come on Hank, sing that song Check it out, I'm the C-A-S-N, the O-V-A, and the rest is F-L-Y You see, I go by the code of the doctor of the mix, and these reasons I'll tell you why You see, I'm six foot one, and I'm tons of fun, and I dress to a T You see, I got more clothes than Muhammad Ali, and I dress so fish as me for our last match today, though, we come back to London for Arsenal against Brighton. And Arsenal certainly seem to have the jinx on Brighton these days. Coming to yesterday's match, they'd met four times this season in the League and League Cup. Arsenal had won three of them, and Brighton had not so much as scored a single goal. But now Brighton have been showing much better form, and it's perhaps as well for Arsenal that central defender David O'Leary returned to the side after missing five matches through injury. Let's join the match, then, in the first half. Ooh, feet of Sunderland a little high on Peter Sotheby. At the same time, it should be said that Peter Sonnaby's head was ducking a little bit low as well. Peter Sayers, a substitute in the background there, and it's going to be Peter Sonnaby now with his wound cleared up with the free kick for Brighton. Willie Young with the header away. Not very far, though, Sullivan. Oh, and a punch away there by Pat Jennings. And it's now with Stapleton, but that really was a let off, and the whistle was gone. There's only for an infringement inside, infringement inside that penalty area, but it was a shot by Peter O'Sullivan, which I think must have been deflected there. And some really quick reactions there by Pat Jennings. Ricks. Again, again for Brady. There's a nice little cross coming in towards Sunderland. Oh, good save by Mosley. That couldn't have been closer. Lovely bit of football. Perfect cross by Brady. Beautiful jump and header by Sunderland. Superb piece of keeping by Mosley. and he should have been allowed there but his glancing header wide of the far post now Sammy Nelson Ricks Brady another oh, coming for Ricks again I don't think he quite thought it was going to make it to him it's a good looking cross there and a beautiful goal by Nelson scoring it's almost as though he's knocked himself out as he uh, got his head to that ball a cross by Graham Ricks and a bullet like header there by the fullback Sammy Nelson towards Ward, back to Clark again Lewis Rice playing it forward Stapleton after it Sunderland's up and Sunderland coming in there Talbot coming in there and in the end Wright can get it away but it was young Gary Stevens who made a very important stop there a free kick to Brighton 
but as the ball came out there and Torbert it was who was steaming in there trying to place a side foot shot and young Gary Stevens who blocked it when that could so easily have been goal number two Sullivan, nicked on there for Peter Ward, a touch here now for Ray Clark for Brighton, Lawrenson's in the middle there waiting something as well, can uh, Ward turn on this one and find something, he'll find Ray Clark with a shot across the goal there, and very nearly coming off David O'Leary, well that could have been embarrassing for Arsenal because they've not really been in a lot of trouble, but suddenly Ward and Clark between them might have produced something, and the ricochet off David O'Leary with Jennings going the wrong way might have proved decisive. A bit of a scare that Arsenal had a few moments ago when that O'Leary ricochet very nearly went into the net has maybe woken Arsenal up to the fact that they are just this one goal up and that's always a precarious lead. Foster. There's really a concerted effort now by Brighton to push people forward. Horton's gone right forward. And now suddenly, Lawrenson's right the way through and just wide of the post. Now Brian Horton complaining about something there as Lawrenson went through. Certainly not dangerous there for Arsenal. O'Leary was a guilty man, allowed himself to be wrong. And suddenly the supporters who've come up from the south coast can see a glimmer of hope as Horton takes it on for Brighton. Sudderby. Horton again. Picked in there once more. Back again for Peter Ward. Letting fly just over the top. And uh, just flipped there by Pat Jennings, presumably. Because it's a corner for Brighton. Well, he's a dangerous player, Peter Ward. A good firm shot in. Ricks for Arsenal. Well, a little bit of acceleration there. Price trying to get on the end of it. Horton laboring to get that ball away. Well, here's Pat Rice. Played in for Price and hit wide of the goal. Got the agony on David Price's face after his skipper had put him through so beautifully. Picked his spot, but it was the wrong one. on the far side and Brady my word he spotted him <laughs> straight to his chest played on straight away there for Talbot and a first time cross there by Ricks towards Stapleton and I think it was Foster getting that one away again oh my word what a shot by Talbot well out of nothing Arsenal very nearly he's got a second one what a raking shot by Brian Talbot the big Norlands up, but not the crossbar. Rice. Oh, nice bit of play by Stapleton. Looking to find something and getting another free kick. Well, you can see what Brian Thornton says, it was a dive, but the referee doesn't agree, it's a free kick. Another good position maybe for Brady to have a bang. Maybe that little chip towards Willie Young on the far side. Three men in the wall, with Horton standing just off it. Attacking the ball there again, the little chip there, this time towards Sammy Nelson, and headed away behind for the corner by Lawrenson. So Price with the corner for Arsenal, floated in there again towards O'Leary was in there, and Torbett's there, but the whistle had gone. The 
whistle went fractionally before Talbot hit it for an infringement. The infringement, I think, by Willie Young. Certainly Talbot gave it a bit of hammer. Right into the roof of the net.
just how much Arsenal have taken out of themselves this week with the game against Tottenham on Monday, Juventus on Wednesday, and now facing such a formidable challenge here against Liverpool this afternoon. Rick's going up for that one, but Hansen winning it in the air. Sammy Lee and Willie Young. Arsenal, though, have lost only one of the last 18. But Liverpool, top of the first division table. And an early touch here for Ray Clements. Not conceded a goal in the FA Cup this season. Well, Lee got there first. Dalglish being shadowed by Rice. Rice having been preferred to uh, John Devine. Kennedy planting it forward again. O'Leary's got to win this one. And Johnson was right in there. And Arsenal could have been in terrible trouble. There was a certain amount of hesitancy there. And in fact, Dalglish at one point looked as though uh, he might be in on one of his little turns. That's where they had the problem. And it looked for a moment as though Dalglish might get something. Johnson closed very quickly but was way off the target. is on his way and Johnson that long ball forward and it'll come for Lee just wide well that was a tremendously swift break from the back by Liverpool and Sammy Lee's shot in the end well it was as well for Arsenal it was wide good piece of running there by Johnson and we'll see just how wide it was, always going away. Going into Kennedy's path. Well, they got a header to that stable then. And in the end, it was Ricks who got in there just before Neil. And uh, with a firmer touch, might have embarrassed uh, Liverpool in defence there. Long, long ball forward. And Neil, I think, may have been slightly casual about it there. And it was Ricks who got the touch, as you could see. his goal and in the end succeeds in getting there just a fraction of a second before the Arsenal striker now Sammy Lee for Liverpool Johnson oh, he's got the better of Willie Young there but he doesn't get the better of Jennings because he doesn't even call upon uh, Big Pat to make a save Lee's made a good run down the, the wing and he was perhaps a little lucky in the end case to get it there for him. O'Leary coming out behind for the corner. With me just for a moment is the man who's not in the Liverpool side today, Terry McDermott. Terry very quickly, no, we have to wait for this corner to be taken. Case playing it in here now. And Willie Young again getting up. Phil Thompson. Sammy Lee. Jimmy Case on the far side once more and Ray Kennedy had gone right in there. And Sunderland had a little bit of trouble getting that away. Good pressure here in these opening moments of the second half by Liverpool as Phil Thompson plants it in again there. Willie Young getting it away for Arsenal. Ricks, the little pass for Brady, with Talbot breaking outside him, or rather Sunderland, uh, Stableton outside him, and Talbot through the middle. And stopped nicely by Lee. Johnson, with pace outside him. Nelson backing off. And the cross coming in, no trouble for Pat Jennings. Terry McDermott, what do you think about the first half and Liverpool's performance so far? Well, I thought in the first place, the Liverpool played ever so well, because he wanted two good chances, and possibly could have scored it all then. He got a little bit dour later on. But um, the first couple of minutes I've seen it there, I mean, I'm quite happy that Lazarus looks a little bit more keyed up now, and um, I'm sure we'll for uh, all the semi-final. And of course, if it comes to a replay on Wednesday, are you going to be fit for that? Hopefully, yes. Um, the way it's going now, it looks like a draw, but anything can happen in semi-finals. And um, hopefully, I'll be, I should be all right for Wednesday. But I hope we um, get a result today. Thanks a lot, Terry. Well, Ray Clements quite comfortably getting that one. And uh, the ball now with Colin Irwin. Jimmy Case. 
Now a chance for Liverpool to break and pace his shot, not hit with his customary power, and always swinging just that little bit away across the crossbar. And something of a let off there for Arsenal because pace was certainly well placed for one of his thunderbolts. As the ball comes into him here, he turns Semi Nelson, and that's how wide it was. making a substitution before the game goes on and in fact it is Jimmy Case who's coming off and David Fairclough the super sub who takes his place Young underneath this one Dalgleish is getting in there and uh, well that was a very debatable decision. I certainly think there should have been something if uh, only a free kick for Liverpool there. Because Arsenal were really caught out by the bounce of that ball and the elusiveness of uh, Kenny Dalglish. Long high ball here, allowed to bounce. Dalglish causing trouble and was obstructed there by David O'Leary. Challenging hard on Hansen, but it's Irwin who brings it away. O'Leary doing his best to get in there and tangle with the Dalgleish. Wins the ball, in fact. Played back again for David O'Leary. And then Brady playing it on for Stapleton, who's onside. Torbert's made a tremendous break through the middle. It's still with Stapleton looking for a shot and hitting a very tame one then against Hansen and behind for the Arsenal corner. will take the corner O'Leary's come up Willie Young's on the goal line and Arsenal have sprung a lot of men forward into this Liverpool penalty area as Price takes that corner Irwin got up Brady looking to dink it back in there again towards Sunderland it might go anywhere Arsenal claiming two handfuls there and twice the referee said play on Willie Young right in there again Clements is down and almost lost it at the feet of Stapleton and Liverpool, for the first time in this game, were in serious trouble there. And maybe Clements is there as well after that challenge from Frank Stapleton. Well, certainly they claimed two hand balls in that uh, skirmishing there. As that ball came in and Willie Young was in for it, that's how Clements got injured there as Stapleton went in with the left boot looking for the ball but there were a couple of incidents before that slow motion where Arsenal claimed a handball there was that moment there and that one there as well Walford looking around but then playing the ball straight to Kennedy game's warming up a little bit now as Rice takes it up for Arsenal played in for Stapleton onside, Clements is coming out and Clements was a good eight yards outside his area and here's Talbot now well Stapleton just onside and how Clements had to come out to make an important clearance there for Liverpool Ricks and this time Talbot making one of those famous breaks of his from midfield and forcing a corner out of Hansen Price with the corner O'Leary and Young up yet again Pressure on Clements and the Liverpool defence once more, but it was quite easily nodded away there by Kennedy at the near post. Price again, looking to get the better of Dalgleish and succeeding. A little cross coming in and Clements just getting it before Sunderland, who as you can see finished up painfully in the back of the net. Rice. And Torbett on side. Now, has he timed it right this time? 
for a bad luck and look at Brian Talbot there. That was so close to putting this semi-final well beyond the reach of uh, Liverpool, even with their great competitiveness. So very close. You couldn't get closer than that. And we're now playing time added on for injuries. As Phil Neal finds Sammy Lee. Fair Clough and a Liverpool throw. Brian Torbett obviously thought it was an Arsenal throw. It's going to be taken though legitimately there by Lee. The ball coming through to Sunis. It's with Kennedy. And a shot that Jennings had to get down to very quickly indeed. On the bench they're starting to zip up their bags and prepare for a visit to Villa Park. Once again it breaks for Liverpool and Ray Kennedy. The referees had another look at his watch. O'Leary getting to that one, turning it away. Arsenal so right to play him to take the risk. But here's Kennedy again. Johnson. Sunis. And Phil Neal in space on the far side. The last seconds of the game now. Thompson. And now with Hansen. Well, there's space here for Irwin. But he's not going to get the ball. And it's out of play. And we're out of time. The final whistle. And uh, a semi-final that goes to a replay now at Villa Park on Wednesday. With a final score then here at Hillsborough in Sheffield. Arsenal nil, Liverpool nil. So it's a replay. Both sides have slight injury problems. In fact, uh, Liverpool still doubtful about Jimmy Case, who went off, and Arsenal about Sammy Nelson. But whether you're a Liverpool fan or an Arsenal fan, you might well be arguing today uh, that there should be no need for a replay because each side came away believing that they might have had a penalty in that second half. But one man who was very close to both those incidents was the Liverpool striker David Johnson. First was Kenny Dalglish fouled by David O'Leary. Um, well, it was one of those decisions where a referee, if he's very, very brave, gives it. And um, on this occasion, I'm afraid, uh, he, he gives the Arsenal defender the benefit of the doubt. Um, I thought uh, David O'Leary just, just stopped and, and was hoping that the ball was carrying through to, to Pat Jennings. And uh, Kenny carried on looking for the ball and David O'Leary just leant into him and just knocked him off the ball you know, enough for it to make the ball go through to, to, to Pat. Um, as I say, a brave referee would have, could, have seen, could have seen an incident there and, and give us a penalty. But uh, unfortunately he wasn't. I don't think it was a penalty. I think it, uh, that, uh, maybe Liverpool should have had something of it. The ball hanging up a little bit there and that seemed to confuse David O'Leary. Does he back into Kenny Dalgleish there? I would have said that would have been a very harsh penalty, but certainly he obstructs the Liverpool player. It wasn't a penalty, but it was an obstruction. And the other penalty claim, did was David Johnson guilty of handball? Absolutely no. Uh, <laughs> the ball hit me full in the face. Uh, it never went anywhere near my, my arms at all. I heard the crowd shouting, and I, I couldn't understand why, because it was plain to any, anybody that hit me full in the face. In fact, there were two incidents there. The first one uh, catches Alan Hansen as the ball comes over here. It's a bit distant for us to be absolutely sure, but the impression is you get that it hits the number six on the thigh. Willie Young is appealing, though, and he was very close to it. And as the ball comes back here, and with his arms upstretched, David Johnson, the ball, as he says, smacks him in the face, and smacks him in the face pretty hard as well. Look at the bounce away from him there. And if you want proof that it hit him in the face, well, that's coming up right there. Mind you, there's no doubt that, if anything, Arsenal more than deserved their replay chance, particularly after their performance in the second half, culminating with uh, Brian Talbot's love against the crossbar so close to the end. And there's little doubt that of the two goalkeepers, Ray Clements of Liverpool had the more demanding afternoon. For example, did Ray recall that chance for Frank Stapleton? I do actually, yeah, because it was just after I'd uh, had the clash in the box in which I got injured. And uh, the ball was played over our defence. And, uh, you know, it's the way we've played for years and the way I've played in the Liverpool team for years that really I'm supposed to act as a sweeper as well as, as a goalkeeper. Yes. In fact, these days, more so as a sweeper than a goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the ball came over, and I think in the first place, I, I thought that Frank Stapleton was favourite to get it but I had to come because there was you no know, if he had carried on I would have been lost it would have been no man's land so I just got as close to him as possible he had full control of it and he tried to knock it past my right hand side and luckily I just managed to get a foot to it and uh, you know we managed to clear the danger 
And what's your memory of that uh, amazing miss right at the end, Brian Talbot? Well, I don't think it was an amazing miss. I think that, uh, you know, Brian did everything right in that the ball came through to him. And there again, I got out to him as quickly as possible and tried to shut whatever space down that he had. And as the ball bounced up, he lobbed it over me beautifully. And uh, as soon as he lobbed it, I thought that it was a little bit too hard and that it would go over the bar. But, uh, of course, they were kicking against the wind in that second half. And it must have held it up that little bit. And then when I turned round, I thought, oh, no, it's going to go in. And I didn't think that, I think it was Colin Irwin and uh, probably Phil Thompson that were trying to get back on the line. And I didn't think they were going to get it. I thought it was just going to sneak in. And of course, it hit the top of the bar and it came down to Alan Hansen. And I think Alan Hansen froze it at the time. He couldn't believe it. And for a split second, he didn't know where to control it, pick it up or kick it or what, because he was so <laughs> surprised, <laughs> surprised with it coming to his feet. And the replay could be won by just one goal, one would imagine. Well, I think that's, I think that's going to happen anyway. I can never see there being many goals between, in a tie between Liverpool and Arsenal. And and uh, invariably semi-finals are won by one stupid mistake or one spectacular goal. Indeed. I just hope that it's not our mistake and that it's one of our spectacular goals. <laughs> I think Arsenal might think differently to that. But our interviewer there was Fred Dynage. And before all you Arsenal fans write to me complaining an Arsenal player on the programme, I should tell you that we did try, only to be told by the Arsenal manager Terry Neal that he will allow no players to be interviewed on either channel until the tie has been resolved. I'm not complaining, I'm only explaining. And of course such a decision is Terry's right. Good afternoon, it's the kickoff match which spotlights the top of the first division. From Anfield, we've Liverpool against Arsenal, who've already met twice in the past week in a bid to reach Wembley. And so do our main match, Liverpool against Arsenal, uh, uh, arguably the two most disciplined sides in the first division, and who were meeting for the third time in seven days. It's the sort of familiarity sure to frustrate the most experienced of players, and yet Liverpool have been able to produce uh, two young reserves more than equal to the task. So before we join our match commentator, Gerald Sinstad, let's hear from the Liverpool manager, Bob Paisley speaking well, the Well, they did a tremendous job the other night, and Sammy and Colin uh, did on Saturday. It's not the easiest uh, of games to come in, semi-finals in the game, but uh, all professionals will tell you that. Yeah, it's not good, the players know too much about each other, and this leads to a little bit of frustration. And this is why I said to uh, the officials, I hope they're a little bit understanding, I mean... Uh, you don't ask for no favours, but uh, just a little bit of understanding because these people know so much about each other and this tends to make it frustrating. Liverpool's policy has always been to make the minimum of changes and with their casualties still not available, it's the side that played at Villa Park on Wednesday. Steve Highway is the substitute. David Fairclough was the goal scorer at Villa Park. That was his 12th goal of the season from very limited opportunities. Alan Sunderland's equaliser in that replay was his 27th in all competitions. But overall, it's an Arsenal team picked with half an eye on next Wednesday's game in Italy. The defence is the one that played at Villa Park, but Liam Brady, with a slight knee injury, and Graham Ricks, rested, are both absentees. Up front, well, there's still that formidable partnership of Sunderland and Stapleton. Is one of the deputies in midfield today, Steve Gatting. He's been with Arsenal since he left school. He's a younger brother of Mike, the Middlesex cricketer. And John Hollins also brought in today, of course, a very experienced footballer with three London clubs, first with Chelsea, then Queen's Park Rangers, and now Arsenal. Had a big thrill too today for referee George Tyson from Sunderland. He's a substitute referee taking over from Derek Civil. Didn't know until Wednesday that he would be doing the game. It's his first ever visit to Anfield as a referee. If he hadn't been in charge this afternoon, then he would have been doing a Parks game up on the northeast. having a bit of trouble keeping the ball stationary on the centre spot as Mr Tyson makes his final checks. It's a pretty windy afternoon, a 
but as you see, beautiful sunshine and strong shadows, which may cause a problem or two for us. Liverpool in the all-red strip, Arsenal in their change colours, light tops and dark shorts. Price, Sunderland, and some Young's header out for Arsenal. Johnson hunting, but uh, he won't get anything out of that. This is Walford. Thompson. Arsenal, I'm sure, will be expecting a siege. But they are a team who've played through a few in their time. Irwin playing it in. Dalglish. Johnson, perhaps a little bit disconcerted. The ball may well have moved a bit in the wind. Collins now with the throw for Arsenal. Thompson. Gatting's header. And we've now got green smoke drifting right across in front of Pat Jennings' goal mouth. Somebody from the cop end has thrown a smoke bomb and that we can really do without. walking cautiously across to have a look at it he clearly can't go on with the game while that's uh, smoking itself out well they've uh, smothered it and removed it now Soonest. Irwin. Fairclough. Kennedy. Johnson. Dalglish. But the formidable frame of Willie Young was in the way of that. Now it's Sunderland for Arsenal. Torbert robs Hansen. Kennedy to the rescue. Torbert threads it out to Sunderland. Torbert again. attacks really are not very well supported from midfield and it looks very much as though Arsenal have come for a point and just will hope to steal the second if they can early days of course to talk about uh, playing for a point at Anfield with uh, only 11 minutes gone Soonis. Oh, we got Bleach and Fairclough in the middle, but that was a header away by O'Leary. Soonis. Owen. Oh, Bleach to Kennedy and back again. And Doug Bleach goes through. was the better part of that. It's in the sun and the wind. Sunderland got it. And then Hansen came in hard on Stapleton. Walford. Chased by 
by Lee and he'll have to hustle. And away goes Lee, but Walford has long legs and a quick turn. And he's given it to Dalgleish. Johnson, Johnson could have taken more time with that. Jennings was a long way out of goal. Arsenal still haven't got it clear because Neil plays it up to Lee. Lee in, and Hollins is there, and Walford, and Walford has given it away again, Neil, Johnson will chase it out, he's got support from Kennedy, maybe Arsenal or Marshall now, and there's a chance for Hollins to clear, and he gives it away, and Arsenal seem to have lost all their composure at the back, Fairclough, good turn, Collins winning it from Sunis's challenge. Talbot. Price. Johnson. Their cup is in the middle. Johnson has stumbled and lost it. But Doug Leash. Irwin. Johnson's head out, he took it over the wall, he had Fairclough and Dalgleish behind him. But the way that Arsenal were giving the ball away there, both with and without pressure, was really alarming for the London side. 15 minutes we've been playing, it's Liverpool 1, Arsenal 0. Price. Young. Talbot, Dalgleish, and that's one for Gatti, Young, Talbot, Sunderland didn't do what he intended but got a second chance, Hollins, Stapleton gets a free kick for Arsenal because of handball by Colin Irwin. Stapleton really was not doing much more, I think, than trying to hold the ball up while some support arrived. Collins playing it in. Hit it down by Thompson for Kennedy. Lee. Neil. throw but it's one-way traffic at Anfield in this first 20 minutes Kennedy Sunis and Kennedy again Irwin Fairclough no offside flag corner David Fairclough attacking down right and left and causing problems on both sides Leash with the corner, just fair cloth for Liverpool in the six yard area, but uh, plenty just outside it. Overcomes that corner in the wind and Stapleton gets it away. Sunis. Dalgleish. Dalgleish gets it over and fair yard area, Fairclough didn't get a touch, Irwin coming in and sees it come back off the bar and then it was Dalgleish who turned it just wide. Some posing problems when that long ball comes through the air from Jennings but so far Liverpool have been really under remarkably little pressure at that end. Gatting, and that's offside by Talbot. Fairclough taking on right.
Tyson crossing early. And that was Young stretching out a toe. It really wasn't very far wide of his own post. A yard maybe, not much more. Cross struck in low from Fairclough and Willie Young just put out a foot. Really didn't know where it was going. Corner struck in. Oh, and against the post. Off an Arsenal defender. Corner came over and I think it was Walford who got the touch. High up by the angle. Now it's Stapleton and Arsenal stay only one down. Stapleton fouled by Neil. O'Leary is up to support the strikers. And Young gets up for the header, but it's two feet over the bar. Willie Young's header coming to nothing for us. Over it comes, and over the top goes the header. Kennedy raking the angled crossover. Walford's header into no man's land. Collins couldn't get a toe to it. Dalglish couldn't find an angle for a shot. Here's Johnson. Kennedy taking it up and crossing hard and low. That was cleared by Price. Sunis hits it and hits it by. Pressure again. Final shot from Graham Sunis. Flashing wide. Turned away by Price, and then Sunis on the volley, kept it down well, but couldn't get it on target. Getting free over on this near touchline. Torbert is delayed until now, there isn't much on for him to turn it back for Hollins. And now they're caught offside. Arsenal back four just sat up and waited for Arsenal to make their own problem there. The Liverpool back four pushing up and the Arsenal midfield crowding up on the front runners. Foul picked up by the referee, Willie Young on David Johnson. One of those little nudges that defenders try to get away with when they think that the referee may be obscured. And it could prove costly because it's certainly in a very threatening position. gone to join the wall as he did when Liverpool had a free kick from a similar position earlier in the half Sunis will take the kick and hits it over the top this time but I think we may have to take it again because the referee is not satisfied that everybody was back 10 yards Mr Tyson insisting I think Sunderland probably was the player who broke He's usually the one who's on tiptoe, straining to get out. Quite legitimate, of course, to try to get there once the ball has been played. But not before. Now soon, and again, he's going to have it taken. And I wonder how long he is prepared to tolerate it without getting out his book. Persistent infringement if they won't get back the 10 yards, and Mr. Tyson is determined that they shall. Still not satisfied. Collins it is who is uh, trying to get his teammates back. Soon he strikes it again and again hits the wall. Well, he can't complain. Three shies and doesn't get anything. It's fair enough. Offside now. to Rice. He's taken us up to within two minutes of half time. And some under pressure from Sunderland who had a hand on his shoulder. Oh. Kennedy. Very neat 
nicely done to work themselves out of the pressure on the touchline. Hansen to Johnson. Leash coming out of the middle to take a short pass, but uh, Liverpool making progress without him. Irwin into Dalglish now. Uh, Dalglish testing O'Leary with those darting turns and stops. Then he finds Sunis. Sunis flicking it on, and Neil tried to bend one high into the top corner, but overdid it. The build-up was lovely. Some very typical skills from Kenny Dalglish dancing and testing his man there. And then a very precise pass and a nice flick from Sunis. Only the final shot going adrift. but then losing it to Lee. Offside. It really can't be from there, it has to be in their own half. So we're into the time that uh, Mr Tyson is adding on and there's not going to be very much of that because there is the half-time whistle. Very satisfactory for Liverpool. Kenny Dalglish's goal separating the teams and I suppose the only question that Liverpool will ask themselves in the dressing room at half-time is whether they shouldn't have scored more goals. There may well be more to come, so join us again in a few moments for the second half. Arsenal then to attack the cop goal to our right in the second half, 45 minutes left in which Liverpool can take a very important step further forward towards winning the championship. They've been leading the table since the first week in December and the match is now gradually beginning to dwindle away. Remarkable how close their duels with Arsenal have been over the years, not just over this last seven days. They've been playing each other since 1893, and if Liverpool win today, they will be level with 47 victories apiece. Walford's throw, Sunderland flicking it on. Stapleton getting it back off Hansen. And a flicked header by Sunderland, caught by Ray Clements, and that really is just about the first save that Clements has had to make. One minute into the second half. Oh. O'Leary safely to Jennings. was too tight but Johnson may still get in oh Jennings nipping out smartly was watching all that from the edge of the six yard area and it was just a quick little sprint to pick up <laughs> foul given against Sunderland on Irwin speeding Fairclough it's still a Liverpool ball Leary's header intercepted by Dalglish Sunis kept it down but wide Graham Sunis has not had much luck with his shooting this season only two goals and Dalglish gives him a chance here keeps it down well very easy to get under those but gets it wide Owen to 
Kennedy. Kennedy to Dalglish. And Dalglish tries to curl one. Some goalkeepers can be caught by those, but Pat Jennings read it with ease and made it look very easy indeed. It's the anticipation. Once it had been anticipated, it wasn't a difficult catch. Walford upfield, header by Neil, interception by Price, Lee jumping, who must be the smallest man on the field. Neil Thompson Soonest again Fairclough and Fairclough almost got it over the top in fact did get it over the top of Jennings but got it also over the bar very deftly done on the turn good left foot effort wouldn't dip soon enough for him David Fairclough, whose uh, 12 goals have been scored in 20 appearances this season, of which 11 are a substitute. It's a remarkable record. defenders having collided with each other and left on the floor. Fairclough went on for the shot. The shot was well wide and it didn't trouble Jennings. Liverpool getting a little bit frustrated by their failure to find a second goal. I think this was a bit over optimistic by Fairclough and you can see it's all five yards wide. David Johnson is going to come off and Steve Highway will take his place. David Johnson to add to his 24 goals this season. Steve Highway will see if he can get one for the first time since November 78. Although, of course, in recent times his first team opportunities have been very limited. Young. Catting. Stapleton. Sunderland is over on the far side and Stapleton was going well until Sooner stopped him at the expense of a corner. They've been playing very nearly 75 minutes and this is Arsenal's first corner. Um, that is perhaps a relevant statistic. Wind stretching up that flag and... Uh, making it easy for Price to keep the ball stationary. It's not a bad corner. Punch from uh, Clements with Young right on top of him. Soonis on for Dalglish. Dalglish turning back inside, but Hollins was watching him. And a foul has been given. Hollins didn't think so. Sunderland Mr. Tyson firm in his decision Lee crossing it's come out to Kennedy Hanson Beckroft didn't get his kick in and Young gets the ball back to Jennings
30 yards out Sammy Lee when the ball came to him didn't hesitate highway went up for the header and then right foot on the volley from Lee but uh, Jennings well behind him Stapleton trying to nod it on for Sunderland and Sunderland turning it back and there's the equaliser and that's the danger that's been there all the time Talbot has got the goal and it is now one all well that has always been the danger Talbot just stooping for the glancing header and it is now one all with 11 minutes to go and Arsenal will feel completely vindicated by their policy Meanwhile, waiting to come on. Well, Paisley, I'm sure, will be mortified by that. Frank Stapleton is the player who has gone off, and Paul Vasson, the substitute, who has come on. And that surely now will give a bit of edge to this last 11 minutes or so. Jing is side up to hang on now. Collins and here's Torbert, the goal scorer. Torbert, the only man who's played in all Arsenal's matches this season. This is his uh, 59th game. Young. in their own half Neil support from Thompson Wolford Vasson and a foul on Vasson by Neil Arsenal free kick this match Liverpool have only one home game that's against Aston Villa to go away to Stoke Crystal Palace and Middlesbrough one minute to go as Thompson hikes the ball upfield young and not even given the minute well it's only 44 minutes on our watches but the final result is a one-all draw Kenny Dalglish having given Liverpool the lead in the 11th minute and then 11 minutes from the end Brian Talbot pops up with the goal that keeps the championship well in the melting pot still and for the second successive match Liverpool are unable to hold on to a one-goal lead against Arsenal well afterwards it was Gerald Sinstad who sought the opinions of the men involved and first of all he spoke to the Liverpool fullback Phil Neal Phil would you put that down as one of your most disappointing performances of the season probably in the second half Gerald yeah um, we put a lot of effort into the first half and uh, I thought we played as well as we played for quite a while um, but it all seemed to go dead in the second half and uh, let's say they snatched the, the equaliser in the end and uh, we were a bit disappointed with the second half display why did you lose your grip who knows um, 
it, it, it's just a thing. It just went dead. I don't know whether it was just through the semi-final in midweek and just tiredness setting in Gerald. I don't know, but uh, we certainly lost a little, little bit. Are you beginning to feel that it's getting to be an effort to get through 90 minutes? Not really, no. Um, <coughs> I think when you've played two semi-finals in a week and, and play the same team on the Saturday, then it's if you put in the the effort in the first half as we did, then mentally you're you're jaded if you haven't got the goals in the net, which we hadn't. We'd only got the one, and we probably deserve deserve probably a couple in the first half, and that would have taken the pressure off completely. But it, we didn't get the goals, and uh, we paid for it in the end. Well, now let's hear the Arsenal view from Terry Neal, surely relieved at the result after absorbing so much pressure in the first half. On one hand, obviously not very happy because we hadn't performed in the first half. And yet, at the same time, we'd given away a silly goal and really been in no great danger in terms of conceding another one, um, despite all the pressure that Liverpool had. What do you think changed it in the second half? <laughs> A little bit of a chat at half time, ah. probably, and uh, <laughs> now we need to know I, what you said then. <laughs> I think um, no, the, the, the players themselves realised that um, they could and they had to lift it a little bit. Um, we didn't play out of our skins in the second half um, either, but it was enough really to get us a draw. That sounds as though you think that. And now uh, round four of the uh, great Liverpool Arsenal saga, their second FA Cup semi-final replay can be seen at Villa Park a week on Monday. And before that, Arsenal play Juventus in Italy, the second leg of their European Cup Winners' Cup semi-final. <laughs> past 
slept on the edge of Anders' dressing room. And there wasn't a sound coming from the dressing room. We were just devastated. That was one of the greatest victories in Arsenal's history. And we deserved it on the night. You know, I don't think Juventus had lost a European tie for many, many, many years. to come out and face the Villa Park crowd here tonight. Liverpool led by their skipper, Bill Thompson. And number three in line, Terry McDermott, and all Liverpool fans will be wondering just what difference he's going to make to this semi-final setup here tonight. So here come Liverpool. To be followed out by Arsenal in their traditional red and white, playing their seventh game in three weeks, but seemingly getting stronger all the time. And you can be sure that they will get a very warm welcome indeed from their fans. So welcome tonight to Villa Park for this FA Cup special. This famous ground will filled again for episode three of this Arsenal-Liverpool semi-final affair. But for the first time, there is now a new factor. Terry McDermott, as I've said, footballer of the year, returns to the Liverpool side after injury. He missed the earlier semi-finals at Hillsborough and the first replay here. And his drive in midfield could be so vital tonight. So Liverpool are getting back to full strength, as well as Terry McDermott, fullback Alan Kennedy, who returned for the goal is draw at Crystal Palace on Saturday. He's also included. Uh, Sammy Lee gets the number eight shirt, and David Fairclough is the Liverpool substitute. As for Arsenal, they rested four of their players in the 1-1 draw with West Bromwich Albion and Highbury on Saturday. And now John Devine is at left back with Sammy Nelson still out. And the scare about Willie Young's fitness obviously has come to nothing. And Arsenal have named Steve Walford as their substitute. The referee tonight is Pat Partridge from County Durham. And now it's Arsenal get us away, attacking the goal to our left in those red and white shirts. Liverpool tonight in the change strip of white shirts and black shorts. And the tension just where will it show itself tonight? Sunderland right through, and a goal! A goal for Arsenal on my watch, 10 seconds. What an amazing start to a semi-final. There can't have been another one like it. Well, Ray Clements absolutely stunned and no wonder. Well, it's Alan Sunderland who scored that dramatic winner for Arsenal at Wembley in the dying minutes last year. Look what he does here. The ball bobbles favourably for him, but my word, he hits it quickly wide of Ray Clements. And Arsenal, unbelievably, in the lead with only 10 seconds gone. Well, the Arsenal fans who've come up the M1, M6 can hardly believe it, and it's stunned the whole of Merseyside. O'Leary getting it away. Wondering where the tension was going to show itself, and it showed itself in all the unexpected places there, right at the heart of that Liverpool defence. And Arsenal had scored even before Pat Jennings had had a touch of the ball. Talbot. John Devine, the young Dubliner. Graham Ricks. Inside again for Sutherland. Played on again that time, but uh, Stapleton had tried to get back into an onside position. The ball was played too firmly in any case, but it was an offside. Well, this big Villa Park crowd. 
to still try to try and work out exactly what happened there in those first 10 seconds. Willie Young up and heading that one away for us. What a boost for the London team. And Alan Hansen here playing it gently back to Ray Clements. Neil Thompson to Ray Kelly. Well, they were hustling up ahead, but the barrier was there, and it was David O'Leary, but he took it too far and lost it to Sunis. Here's McDermott, a touch for Lee. On again for Terry McDermott. Back for Sammy Lee for Liverpool. Here's Neil. Played in again towards Dalgleish. Turned across there, and Brady as cool as you like. Maybe a little too cool for one or two Arsenal fans because there was so little to spare for Pat Jennings. Let's look at the man's nerve here after Dalgleish had cut that in and the white shirts are converging and there was just enough Gill, Hanson. Still those white shirts of Liverpool come forward looking for that equalising goal. Stapled in on that challenge. Kennedy, lovely skills on the ground there and a pass into space here for Lee swung in and across that Arsenal goal again Stapleton right back there McDermott with a shot oh a marvellous save by Jennings McDermott can't believe it and I think the majority of people here can't either because as that came swinging in and the corner's already taken what a save that was by Pat Jennings Well, the corner was successfully cleared by Arsenal. Lee putting Dalgleish away. And across the face of that Arsenal goal that time. Well, you've got to hand it to Liverpool. They've really come back like true champions from that early goal. They've had the better of it. And it took a really mighty save from Pat Jennings. The positive action from Graham Ricks. No, he's lost it to the aggression of Graham Sunis and the skill as well. And he's got men up there. Dalgleish is in there. And Devine, the young Irishman, saving Arsenal with a brilliant piece of defence there when it looked as though Kenny Dalgleish was right through. Here's the ball again coming in. This time from Sammy Lee. And that time grabbed by Pat Jennings. Stapleton winning it well in the air. Ricks darting it forward again for Sunderland to try and get clear of Phil Thompson. And that's going to be Price's hitter! And it caused Ray Clemens to make another save. And Liverpool could so easily have been caught out there. The cross coming in there and Price with the header. In any case... going to be a free kick for Arsenal. Wait, nearly two minutes now of stoppage time. And there's the half-time whistle. And if you forget the first ten minutes, they can hardly, territorially speaking at any rate, have been a more one-sided game than we've seen here with Liverpool throwing everything at Arsenal. One tremendous save by Pat Jennings, some near misses as well, but Arsenal defending stoutly as Liverpool have thrown everything at them. But of course you can't overlook that first ten seconds of the game when Alan Sunderland struck that goal for Arsenal that gives them this half-time lead. But it really has been an exhilarating first half. The half-time score then in this FA Cup semi-final second replay at Villa Park. Liverpool nil, Arsenal won, and we should be back with the second half. And welcome back to Villa Park for the second half of this second FA Cup semi-final replay. Liverpool in the white shirts attacking the goal to our left. And I suppose the legitimate question really could well be, can Arsenal now hang on to that? One goal lead scored so quickly in the game, and certainly on the evidence of that first half, they really might well face another pounding now as we start the second. Nobody can argue that they've got anything other than true value for money here tonight. In fact, uh, I'm told that this is, of course, the third semi-final that Villa Park has housed this season, the second one between these two sides, and then West Ham and Everton before that, that they've taken something like £100,000 as their part in it. Uh, very tidy pickings, but it's uh, a grand stadium and it's been well managed here tonight. And it's Pat Rice to take the throw for Arsenal. Who's beaten Cardiff and Brighton and Bolton and Watford to get this far. 
far, with Liverpool getting past Grimsby, Nottingham Forest, Bury and Spurs. But in the light of the saga, these two clubs have already had those matches seem such a long time ago now. Brady playing it wide there, cut out by Lee. But only Johnson is up for Liverpool, but he's getting some support now. And he's brought down by Devine. But Stapleton, who's injured, and Liverpool making a substitution. David Fairclough is coming on, and Alan Kennedy, who was hobbling a moment ago, is off. So they swap an attacker for a defender, which is going to mean a slight reshuffle. Might well mean they drop uh, Ray Kennedy back a little bit. No, they're dropping Sammy Lee to right back, and Phil Neal is coming across to left back. David Fairclough, of course, going up amongst the front runners. So Sammy Lee right back, Phil Neal left back for Liverpool. Putting it away, but it's only for a throw. It's Kennedy again for Liverpool. Turned by Johnson for Sunis. And now for Dalgleish on the turn, but Young is sticking so close to him. Dalgleish has wriggled free and hits it straight at Jennings. let this man turn look how close Willie Young had stayed with him but there was another turn coming up yet but there it is just gives him that yard but again hit straight at the keeper here's Lee again now Phil Thompson hit high once more the white shirts are all up there but it's Willie Young who got it away Brady couldn't get a touch McDermott can though to Phil Neal laid in by Hanson O'Leary's header this time Thompson, the Liverpool skipper there. Everybody bar Ray Clements well inside that Arsenal half now. Thompson once more for Liverpool. It's a matter of two and a quarter minutes left as Thompson plays it in once more. Not it forward again. O'Leary right in there. And Jennings right in there. And kicked away again, but the whistle had gone. And Liverpool again are swarming around. So one Liverpool player in a bit of trouble there. Who is it? It's David Johnson. Well, this is how it all came about, and it really was frantic in that on that far post as Jennings came for it, and uh, it was finally belted away there. And the stretcher coming on for David Johnson. Well, that's a terrible, sad blow for Liverpool. They well, from now on, it's really conjecture how much time there is to go. As Fairclough is prepared to go on, but it looks as though it's the end of the night for David Johnson. So Liverpool are going to be with 10 men for what remains and it's conjecture just how much does remain now because we're over the 90 minutes it really is now a question of just how much Pat Partridge the referee will add on for stoppage time Pat Jennings with the kick for Arsenal it's with Neil his socks down about his ankles now it's got to be last desperate challenge now for Liverpool, one last charge, Brady now, dispossessing Phil Neal, Stapleton up there with him, the ball bouncing kindly for him, but Phil Thompson's going to be across there, and back it goes to Ray Clements, everybody's eyes turns towards the referee again, but he's not even at the moment looking at his watch, we've played a minute of injury time, and the ball comes out to Lee, and Arsenal are close to making it an all-London final if they can hold on for just a few more seconds. Free kick for Liverpool. It's not over yet. McDermott hoisting it high again. Alan Hansen's right in there. And again, it's Colbert with a mighty boot away. Phil Neal underneath it. Played 90 seconds of time added on. Can Arsenal still hold out these last few seconds? Will Liverpool yet save themselves? McDermott with a shot. He cannoned off with a young. Sunis looking to try and get a shot in, Willie Young belting it away again. Really is amazing stuff this now. Arsenal have been under the cosh for nearly all the night, but they are just a few seconds away from a third successive Wembley appearance with that goal right at the start by Alan Sunderland. The ball inside the Liverpool half again. The referee looking at both linesmen to see where the time is up. Neil playing it forward hopefully once more. Returned with compliments by Willie Young. Bill Thompson playing it forward again. Dalgleish getting ahead of there. Kennedy.
Brady playing it back there. McDermott storming in on this one. Played here for Sunis. How much more can anybody stand of this sort of tension? Not even again. And it might be there. Davies! Right at the last. They're off the Liverpool bench. And Arsenal were just seconds away from Wembley. And now, well, who knows? Kenny Davies has scored when the referee had added more than two minutes of injury time. because the pendulum, if anything, should swing to Liverpool after their saving goal right at the end of normal time and yet, in these punishing last 30 minutes, they have to play with 10 men. Just which way will it go? There he is. He looks in a bad way, but he looks as though he wants to come back on or at least to see what's going to happen. And Johnson is back on and Liverpool the full strength. Stapleton, Lowry, Kennedy, and Fairclough's after this one, and Willie Young couldn't be sure that Jennings would get there in time. He must have heard the roars in the dressing room when that Kenny Dalglish equaliser went in. Outside it. 
David Fairclough. Tried just a little too much. O'Leary for Brady, who seems to be struggling a bit, Brady. Oh, and that pass can easily come for Ray Kennedy. remaining to decide if it will be decided tonight that is who goes through to beat West Ham at Wembley soon as for Liverpool and the Arsenal fans still in very good heart disappointed though they must be that it's come to this 
still at 1-1 when it looked for so long as if it was going to be 1-0 and here's Johnson stopped by Willie Young what a good game he's had Brady Talbot that's an Arsenal throw well, the linesman flagged Arsenal the referee said no it just clipped off Brady it's a Liverpool throw
Liverpool's Avi Cohen gets an unexpected chance in the defence. He says he feels a little nervous about it. But what about the character of the Liverpool striker David Johnson? Five stitches in that eye wound from Monday night, but he's out there battling again. The referee as at Villa Park on Monday night is Pat Partridge from County Durham. And so it's Liverpool in that famous all-red strip of theirs who get us away, attacking the goal to our right. The ball with Phil Thompson. And Liverpool, you can be sure, determined not to concede a goal as quickly as they did at Villa Park. Just ten seconds on that night. Ball coming to Graham Ricks here, who's had a very severe haircut since Monday night, I notice. And a throw to Arsenal. Here's John Devine. Now Ricks. again but Thompson for Liverpool one of the things that's got to be said about this cup tie fierce and competitive though they've been the behavior of the players on both sides has been absolutely magnificent towards each other it's a point that Bill Shankly was making just before the game tonight so I think the game has drawn an awful lot of credit from these battles between these two great old clubs Phil Thompson there with his header Phil Neal well, he's giving a ball to Sunderland, played in here for Stapleton, and he hit one first time, and he hit it straight at Avi Cohen, the number three, and it was a mistake there by Liverpool that uh, could have cost them dearly. As it is, it's a corner for Arsenal to be taken by David Price, and O'Leary is up, with Willie Young also up at the near post. The big men from the back are up for Arsenal, and it's into the side netting for a goal kick. Graham Ricks with it. Brady. And Ricks.
Max really asserting himself there. A little drag back by Sunderland. Brady going in there to try and whack that ball into the Liverpool penalty area. Ricks now turning it in there well and knocked away extremely well there by Abby Cohen. Is it the far post as Arsenal get a corner? Ricks now hitting it straight at McDermott. Price in there, McDermott with the clearance. That's a couple of little touches from Cohen and both of them have been very good ones. But at the moment it's Pat Rice for Arsenal. Played up nicely here again for Arsenal but Ray Kennedy that time coming to stop Stableland but Stableland got a second chance. Torbert coming in and Arsenal are in the lead with Brian Torbert. Well it was a terrible moment again for Ray Clements and there was no chance for him as uh, Brian Torbert came roaring in for that headed goal. A mistake on that far side by Ray Kennedy who slipped at a most inopportune moment, couldn't put it out, floated back superbly by Stapleton and look at him lining up there, but it's Torbert's guided header wide of Clements. 11 minutes gone, Arsenal in the lead. So are we going to get a repeat now of Villa Park where Arsenal there got an early lead and Brady on Sunis and Sunis pointed fingers at Brady and the referee is having words with the Arsenal number seven. And in fact Phil Thompson I think wanted the referee to have a look at Sunis to see what was wrong with him and Sunis is still on his haunches in fact after that clash with Lee and Brady. But another brilliant start by Arsenal. And now I think they know what they can expect. An onslaught almost ceaseless now from Liverpool. It's Phil Thompson again with the free kick. Hit high towards Ray Kennedy. And Price giving it there to Sammy Lee. Well, that was the most extravagant uh, curler that he attempted there. Way, way wide and a goal kick. Bill Thompson with it. And McDermott, and down goes Jennings. Of course, Terry McDermott didn't begin to catch that the way he wanted to. Last seconds of the first half, with Arsenal leading by Brian Talbot's goal. Warner floated in there towards Ray Kennedy, coming for David Johnson, hit through a crowd of players. Ray Kennedy turning it wide. was absolutely amazing it's a corner in fact it must have been an Arsenal defender who somehow got a boot in there and got it wide when it looked a formality for Ray Kennedy Lee turning it in there Soonest now and Johnson saved by Pat Jennings a tremendous finish to the first half and what a marvellous save it was from Pat Jennings from David Johnson and when it rebounded it looked a formality for Ray Kennedy until it was hooked away for the corner They're into time added on for stoppages at the end of the first half. And in fact, there goes the half-time whistle after that tremendous flurry there by Liverpool that almost brought the equaliser to the goal scored by Brian Talbot after 11 minutes for Arsenal that put them into the lead. Kennedy's header and one by O'Leary. McDermott is Lee right in there. What a good little header by him for Johnson. And Lee available again if required. Instead of that, it's uh, Phil Neal. Now Lee's required. Playing a nice simple ball again in there for McDermott. Maybe a little too close to that byline though. But McDermott has made something of it. Oh. And uh, Price very nearly lost it there to Kennedy in a very dangerous position. Soon as coming up in support this time for Liverpool. And now it's with Cohen turning it in and off Sunderland for the corner. So Rice at the near post. And that's going to be divine at the near post as Dalgleish will float one of those little corners in for Liverpool. Up under Jennings crossbar and... Uh, Again, a good bit of safe catching by the big Irish keeper. The crowd are shouting me on the left. I think Pat Partridge has been in long enough to know that you can't please everybody. 
and he can only give what he sees and he's one of the best and that's a good break forward by Phil Neal and it might work for them Dalvish with a shot oh off the legs of Jennings and soon as tried to turn it in and somehow Jennings retrieved it again look at Pat Jennings the calmest of men giving somebody a bit of stick in that Arsenal defence and it was a great run by Phil Neal in the first place right up there when Arsenal tried to play the offside Delvis' shot hits Jennings on the leg and as it seemed to be going out in fact it was McDermott coming in there and he couldn't quite turn it in what an amazing scare there again for Arsenal but they still retain this single goal lead it's a good challenge by Devine and here's Talbot Look how he's being hustled. And it'll fall for Johnson, and he just kept it in. Flicked on this time by McDermott with a back heel for Lee to cross it across the face of the Arsenal goal. And behind for the goal kick. Still pretty venomous on the break, and this great little competitor, Sammy Lee, has grown up so much in this cup competition. themselves to safety but here's a great break now by Talbot he could put everything behind him no the whistle had gone the whistle had gone fractionally offside there a matter of six or seven yards inside the Liverpool half and the red flag of the linesman calls him back So we're left still with, what, six and a half minutes as Hansen plays it in there again. O'Leary up brilliantly. There's Sunis. But the whistle had gone there as well, and it's a free kick for Arsenal. Not surprising you don't hear the whistle in the tumult that's here at the moment as Liverpool fans try to urge one last big effort out of their famous team, and Arsenal fans are already beginning to celebrate the thoughts of a trip to Wembley on Saturday week. There are six minutes to go. semi-final defeat and they're staring at it again now with a little over five minutes to save themselves against Arsenal that's a free kick for Arsenal turning it in for Sunis. Brady, Ricks. Stapleton again. Played inside for Ricks. He tried to get it on for Sunderland. Now it's with Talbot. And the challenge was strong again, but Brady tried to get in there. He cracked Sammy Lee in the face. I think it's a free kick. Thompson. Four minutes to go. Arsenal throw, although Phil Neal wants to take it himself. Come on, you yellows, say the Arsenal fans, with three and a half minutes left. 
Sammy Lee. Brady to Talbot. And an onside this time against Sunderland. He looked at the linesman as though he couldn't believe it himself. And a chance maybe, no. It's just knocked away there by Hansen as uh, Stapleton came in. The long ball forward now by Sammy Lee. And Arsenal getting back in strength and it's fully young. And have Liverpool got the resolve or anything left in their legs now to pull this one out of the bag. Three minutes. Hanson's header. Brady. Challenged strongly by Ray Kennedy. Phil Neal playing it forward again towards that dangerous man, Kenny Dalgleish. But O'Leary beat him in the air that time. Hanson to Cohen. The linesman's flag up on this side for an offside. will take the kick and Arsenal will be determined not to let this one slip again Sunderland Hansen there Ricks but Thompson going through that challenge McDermott hitting it on Dalglish battling away with uh, Willie Young and again the whistle's gone again it's an offside against Arsenal and once more it's a free kick for Liverpool Two minutes left on the clock. Phil Neal, high into that Arsenal penalty area. The big men are there once more, and the little men, like Sammy Lee, just nicking that one in there towards Kenny Dalglish. But that time, Rice was covering him, and Jennings was secure. 90 seconds are left. Sunderland, and that's a pass that will knock a few more seconds off the clock as the referee looks at both linesmen now. I make it a matter of seconds and ask her away. Three successive Wembley finals it'll be for them, and that's a record. Liverpool's double is finished because Arsenal have won and go through to Wembley to meet West Ham on Saturday week. Round Torbett, the scorer. The man who's made the difference, but he knows also the man who's made the difference at the other end Pat Jennings with three stupendous saves in this game and Arsenal have ensured an all London final at Wembley and have denied Liverpool a chance of a really memorable double Liverpool who saved themselves superbly at Villa Park are trudging off the field of beaten side knowing that they now have an important game on Saturday when they have to lift themselves to play Aston Villa in a match that could win them the league championship Talbot pursued by photographers. A smile of victory all over his face. That header after 11 minutes. Well, he's won a cup winner's medal at Wembley with Ipswich. He did it last year with Arsenal. And now he's putting him himself in line for number three. Well, the scenes of jubilation are there for Brian Talbot and the Arsenal supporters. They, they talk these days about pressure of games and everything like that. Well, you just seem to be on a plane or a coach all seat. <laughs>
six-day siege. Nineteen hostages, including the three Britons, are safe. The end came with an assault on the building by the Army's Special Air Services Regiment, the SAS, not long after gunmen had killed two hostages and pushed the body of one out onto the embassy steps. They threatened to kill another hostage every half hour. It ended with three gunmen dead, one in hospital and another in police custody. <laughs> for the cup is more than a mere football match. It's also a struggle between supporters from two very different parts of London. And if First Division Arsenal, last year's winners, must be favourites to beat Second Division opponents, out in West Ham, they don't see it that way. All I hope is that um, we've, uh, we've got voice enough to, you know, to overpower the cosmopolitan crowd from Arsenal. I'm quite convinced the Cockney boys will do their bit. I'm quite convinced of that. In West Ham, it's Jubilee all over again. Five years since their last cup final victory. The preparations are wholehearted. Oh, the excitement is great. I've never known such enthusiasm. People have come in, they've all been buying the fibres, the children are all been dressing up, and it's been really great. I've had to send to Holland for special colour flowers. Mm. For this time, they've all ordered presentations and baskets, and they said even if they don't win the cup, they've got to the cup, and that's the greatest thing they can do for us. For Ready there, yourself? Oh, yes. For Maureen Fenwick and her husband, it's almost as if Christmas has come again. Mrs Fenwick, you've gone to a lot of trouble here, really. Extraordinary. Why? Well, we support West End, don't we? How long did it take you to do all this? Um, about a week. You always do this, season after season? Oh, yeah, yeah. You do? Oh, yeah. What do you think of your neighbour opposite, who doesn't seem able to make up his or her or their mind? <laughs> Mike was a trier. <laughs> How he come? supports Arsenal. Him and the kids support Arsenal and we support West End. <laughs> Meanwhile, an hour's drive away, there's just as much eager anticipation as Arsenal fans wait to get their heroes' autographs. There we are. All right. What are you, what are you doing here? Collecting autographs. Who have you got? I don't know. I can't read it. The Arsenal team had a surprise visitor this morning to discuss training and tactics. Their fan of many years, Graham Salmon, the fastest blind man in the world, whose clock 11.4 seconds over 100 metres. I come to all the home games anyway, and if I can get to any of the away games, I'll go. But um, here we have a, a commentary which Arsenal very kindly provide, and there's a, uh, for a couple of uh, commentators that come along each week and, and tell us what's going on. So you can get the atmosphere and hear what's going on. That's right, yeah, it's marvellous. It's a very what, good service. What about tomorrow? Can you get the same thing there? Um, well, I should take a small radio tomorrow with an earpiece, so I'll be able to savour the atmosphere and uh, enjoy the BBC commentary. <laughs> prowl amongst some other attractive ladies. Sarah, um, uh, you, you are Liam Brady's uh, lady. Any, any, any plans? He was talking about him wanting to go to the continent, wasn't there? Uh, there is. I think he's going to go. No, he's, that's what he's made up his mind to do. Well, how do you feel about that? Uh, I don't mind. Um, he'll make up his mind and I'm sure he'll make the right decision. Yeah. Now, Hilke, Hilke Brooking, you met Trevor at a wedding, didn't you? Yes, um, his brother actually married the Finnish girl, and I was a bridesmaid at the wedding, and he was the best man. 
and uh, it started from there. And you came here as an au pair girl? Yes. From Finland? Yes, to Hampstead. Mm. Working you very hard, of course? Yes, no complaints. It was a lovely family and um, we still keep in touch. What do you do when uh, Trevor, if he does, comes home depressed? What do you do to comfort a disappointed footballer? Actually, I'm very lucky because Trevor really doesn't so much of his feelings. And uh, actually, I'm the one really who gets more depressed and I think he's comforting me. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, you, you get rid of the emotion for him. Now, walking along, uh, Jill, you're... you're um, <laughs> Don't talk to you. I'm nervous on television. I understand. Yeah. You're a dental nurse, aren't you? Yeah, afraid so. <laughs> Have you ever had to work on Graham's teeth? Because you see some terrible gaps in no, the mouth I'm, sometimes. Yeah, I'm still trying to persuade him. He's, he's got an appointment in two weeks' time, but, you know, the season being so busy, he hasn't really had any time, so his teeth are falling apart, you know. Are you his dentist, in fact? No, <laughs> just hold his hand while he, like, collapses in the chair. But <laughs> They're not brave, then, away from the field? No, not really. <laughs> um, Isn't it a glorious day for it, anyway? I must talk to, um, to Chris Devonshire, because, Chris, your, your fellow must be the happiest man in the world. Yes, he is very happy at the moment, yes. Because he's, uh, he's in the international squad. That's right, yeah, very pleased. And he's had this price put on his head of two and a half million pounds. That's right, I'm trying to find someone to buy him, but I'm having <laughs> no luck at the moment. <laughs> I'm sure some will be very willing. Now, Lavinia Parks, your, your bloke's in, in the goal for the team. Yeah. Now, um, I've, I've read that he's a very handy man, isn't he? He is very handy at home, yes. Apart from being a good goalkeeper. Yeah. But uh, he did this very romantic thing of putting right. a gold disc on your living room wall, That's not right, his football yes. trophies, no. for your seventh wedding anniversary. That's but right. what went wrong? Uh, he put the wrong diet on. <laughs> one day out. Only one day. <laughs> That's enough, though, isn't it? Yes. Is he an absent-minded bloke? He is, yes, as far as diets are concerned, yeah. But it was a, a nice thought. Tell you what, let's have one huge prediction. Um, from the West Ham girls, what's the result going to be, do you reckon? 2-1 two, two to West Ham, say the West Ham girls. Uh, Arsenal, what's the score going to be, do you reckon? 3-1. Three, 3-1. One, three, one. In whose favour? <laughs> Silly question. Right, well, of course, I am very discreet. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going home and sit quietly by my television set. By the way, what do you like when you watch the match, girls? I mean, do you watch quietly and calmly? <laughs> Hooligans. Obviously, no. Hooligans. Oh, that's a nice touch. Anyway, I'm off to watch it at home. I'm sure you are as well. Have a nice day and good luck. Cheers to both teams. Hip, hip. Hooray! The players' wives and the relaxing influence of Michael Aspel. The wheat is going to Engines stuck on it But I have no fear Cause London is drowning And I Live by the river To the imitation zone Forget it brother You can go in alone London calling To the zombies of death Quit holding out And draw another breath London calling And I don't want to shout but while we were talking, I saw you nodding out London calling, see we ain't got no high Except for that one, with the yellowy eyes The ice is coming, the sun's zooming in Engines stuck on it, the wheat is going to be A nuclear error, but I have no fear Cause London is drowning and I
Dickie Bird of the FA, as he does every year, leading out the two teams. West Ham on the right, led by John Lyle. Arsenal led by Terry Neal. There's young Paul Allen, just going through there, the 17-year-old. The wall of noise has hit him now. Brooking and Devonshire at the back for West Ham. And two old buddies there. They played against each other. John Lyle and Terry Neal. Have you ever seen managers more relaxed? But I'm sure both of them well aware of what a proud moment this is for them. Managers up and down the country watching that now would be saying, my word, I'd swap where I am now to be where they are now. Arsenal players who are presented first. Arsenal in their, what has become really their favourite Wembley strip, uh, yellow shirts and blue shorts, and West Ham today will be wearing an all-white strip. And on the left... Uh, his Royal Highness, the Duke of Kent, who is president of the Football Association. On the right is Sir Harold Thompson, the chairman of the Football Association. And on the left of the pictures, we look Mr. Ted Croker, secretary of the Football Association. Behind them, Bob Lord of Burnley. Arsenal, the first team to be presented. Say memory plays tricks on one, but I always had the feeling that the anthem was played after the presentation of the teams. Very really young there, tall, red-haired central defender who's had such a storming cup run, David Price. And Alan Sunderland. The Duke, no doubt, asking him if he fancies scoring another late dramatic winner this year. John Devine, what a moment this must be for him with all his family across from Ireland to see him. Sammy Nelson, the unlucky one, but took it really like a man. And David O'Leary, just 22 years old and so much experience behind him, and Terry Neal. Well, if Terry gets going, the Duke may never get away from him. And now it's West Ham's turn. We're there, Captain Billy Bonds. Trevor Brooking. And Alan Devonshire. Well, West Ham have won their last two finals here in 1964 when they beat Preston. And in 75 when they beat Fulham. And we'll see, you can see right in the centre of your picture there. There he is shaking hands, young Paul Allen. Beside him, Jeff Pike. Ray Stewart there and Stuart Pearson. And the big man there, Phil Parks. Ten years ago this month, he came down from Walsall to London to join Queen's Park Rangers. David Cross with a beard, played here in a League Cup final, in fact, against uh, Spurs for Norwich City. 
And the referee there speaking with His Royal Highness is George Courtney. was saying last night, the uh, feeling is that the West Ham fans might have a little more volume in their voice and the bubble song certainly seems to be dominating the Wembley scene at the moment. And now the teams have broken away as the guest of honour goes back to the Royal Box. And here at Arsenal with Pat Rice there you can see applauding the Arsenal fans. And my word, they've been loyal fans, the way they've travelled up and down the M1 and uh, into Europe as well to follow their team this season. This is Arsenal's 67th game of the season. And this is the team that represents them today with Pat Jennings in goal, Pat Rice, John Devine, Brian Talbot, who got that winner against Liverpool in the semi-final, David O'Leary, Willie Young, Liam Brady, Alan Sunderland with 28 goals this season, Frank Stapleton with 24, the real threat to West Ham there, David Price, number 10, Graham Ricks, number 11, and the substitute, the fullback, Sammy Nelson, their manager, Terry Neal. West Ham in a change strip also of all-white, with Phil Parks in goal for them, Ray Stewart, Frank Lampard, Billy Bonds, Alvin Martin, who just yesterday signed a long-term contract to stay with the club, Alan Devonshire, Paul Allen, the 17-year-old, Stuart Pearson, who scored here for Manchester United against Liverpool, David Cross, Trevor Brooking, Jeff Pike, and their substitute, another fullback, Paul Brush, with their manager, John Lyle, West Ham. Well, Paul Allen, I think all that can be said has been said about him, and really, it's now down to him in the next 90 minutes to have his say. 17 years old, the youngest player ever to appear in a Wembley Cup final, beating by 89 days Howard Kendall, who was 17 when he played for Preston in 1964 against West Ham. And David Cross having... That's a nice shot. David Cross, the experienced man, having a little word with Paul Allen there. George Courtney, the referee, and deputy headmaster from uh, Spennymore in County Durham. 38 years old, one of the youngest referees, in fact, to get a final. Pat Rice and Billy Bonds, the two captains. Well, stay as we are, I think Billy Bonds said, having uh, won that toss. And the whistle that's just going into George Courtney's mouth, a special silver whistle, I'm told that was given him by a friend who 20 years ago said if ever you get to a Wembley Cup final I'd buy you a silver whistle well the man at the moment is Brian Talbot in many ways a winner here with Ipswich two seasons ago a winner here with Arsenal last season will he get three wins on the trot or will Billy Bonds and his men stop him West Ham clearly the underdogs but, who knows, with Trevor Brooking there, all things are possible. But West Ham know, and they fear that Arsenal will come hard at them, and they need to survive very much the first 20 minutes, and then to begin to play it their way from then on. But, West Ham have beaten three first division sides on their way to this final. West Bromwich, Aston Villa with a last-minute penalty, and Everton in the semi-final. Pat Rice, his fifth FA Cup final, and Liam Brady here. Hasn't scored in the Cup this season, but today would be a good day to start. Fifth Cup final for this man. The only survivor, in fact, Pat Rice, the Arsenal captain from the 1971 double side. And Pat Jennings, his sixth Wembley final in a 17-year career. Those immense hands will have a job to do if West Ham have anything to do uh, to say about it this afternoon. So the 1980 Cup final is underway. Arsenal attacking the goal to our left in yellow shirts and dark shorts. If you're watching it in, uh, in black and white, just watch for those black shorts of Arsenal. West Ham in an all-white strip. It's O'Leary for Arsenal. Brady saying, let me have that one. Rice 
wide again for O'Leary, patiently. Slip wide here again for Talbot, back to Rice again. I don't think a West Ham player has touched the ball yet. It's Ricks with a very severe haircut, and a long ball forward that catches Brady fractionally offside against West Ham. A free kick. Gives West Ham the, uh, a free kick and it gives him the first touch to the ball because the first time Arsenal played it long, they lost it. Young Rick shouldn't have played it long. It's with Lampard. Pearson. A little touch off there for Devonshire. Oh, he's gone past Price. Still with Devonshire. Loves to run with the ball there. Played inside here for Cross. He's got a bit of support here from Brookings. Swept wide first time there for Stewart. Played back this time for Billy Bonds. Nice move building up by West Ham. But in the end, well, Williams header only coming as far as Paul Allen. But luckily for him, he didn't control it. But it went to David Cross, who hits it first time. And it bounces off Pat Jennings. From Cross. Sunderland's backward flick. Martin guiding it back. Leaving it for Pearson. Lampard's continued his run and Pearson has gone right past them all. Pulled it back there. Pike, a shot that is well saved by Jennings. Good break by West Ham and little Pike was really on that superbly. What a good break by West Ham, Brian. Actually, when the shot was on, it was nearly a chance. He did well, Pearson, Pearson. There, laying it in very, very early. It's an early shot as well. It came through a crowded box. Sunderland. And now West Ham forward again with Brookie. A little flick there for Cross, and in fact it comes through to Pearson. And here's Devonshire. West Ham really carrying the fight now to the favourites Arsenal as Devonshire goes past Torbert. The cross there that Jennings couldn't get. Oh, and Cross almost got it in there. And Pearson has. Cross was involved there as well. Here's Devonshire with 13 minutes gone. Devonshire with the cross. Jennings couldn't reach that one. Cross had a bang at that one. And it comes out again to Pearson. And in fact, it went in off Brooking, I think. Pearson shot coming in there, and in fact the header from Brooking. You see that again now, Brian, you realise what a very good instinctive header it was, because he had so little time. If he hadn't have headed, it would have knocked his head off, Brian. And you can hear the bubbles. Song from West Ham fans, and that's a song that Arsenal will want to silence. Brady slipping past one, slipping past another, finds Torbett here, a little one-two, they're trying to get it going, and look at the coolness there of Ray Stewart, but then he gives it away to Ricks. Ricks is shot, only half saved there by Phil Cox. Rookie. Oh through the legs of Rice but Price was there Willie Young planting a good ball forward this time for Brian Talbot Price spotted Ricks away out to the left there but decided the pass looked for the return from Stapleton Pearson it's Talbot challenged unfairly by Devonshire is the second one. Pearson took a knock as well. And it's Talbot now for Arsenal. On for Stapleton. Ricks waiting patiently on that far touch line. But a lovely left boot. And Pike is doing his darndest to make sure he can't use it. Billy Bonds out there as well. Bonds who seems to be everywhere on this field at the moment. And it's Bonds who got the challenge in. Sunderland's little touch. 
Devonshire's little touch. Willie Young shots over the West Ham crossbar, but it clipped off a West Ham defender for the corner. So Young part of the near post. Brady with the kick. O'Leary up in there as well. Brady's long hanging free kick there and uh, both Willie Young and Sunderland there but the header going quite tamely wide of the West Ham goal. As you can see we're over the 45 minutes. And the ball with Talbot for Arsenal. Rice playing it in once more A little flick on by Sunderland And Lampard doing the covering job there And getting it away Things were happening too fast behind him For him to risk the pass back to this man, Phil Parks So he put it away for Torba to take the throw As the whistle goes for half-time I think, yes it is, the half-time whistle Trevor Brookings goal Gives West Ham the interval lead. A quick sum up for you, Brian. Well earned lead, just because of their enthusiasm, and they took the one chance that dropped to them. Arsenal have controlled a lot of the game without actually creating any chances and looking very, very dangerous. So if West Ham can continue to have the discipline they're showing at the moment, and Arsenal do get over anxious, they might get pulled forward and could concede another one. But I still fancy Arsenal. There's the half-time conclusion then from Brian Clough. A half-time score here then at Wembley. Arsenal nil, West Ham won, the scorer Trevor Brooking. We're going to take a break and then we come back to see what Jack Charlton and Ian St John think about it.
Welcome back to Emily. Let's turn to Ian St. John and Jack Charlton. Jack Brian Clough was saying uh, that he thought that uh, Arsenal might still yes, pull this game round. So you know, West Ham have done well defensively. They've got the goal, and uh, now they start the back four are sitting at the back, but they're controlling it and they're pushing out to the penalty spot and they're not letting Arsenal get in behind them. And uh, Arsenal have got to start getting to the dead ball and getting the ball back over if they're going to go and score a goal. But Alan Sunderland and uh, Stapleton have got to put themselves about a little bit more in there, particularly Alan Sunderland, who's having a nightmare. And it's, uh, it's just one of those games where Arsenal are going to have to keep plugging away. And like the last couple of incidents just before half time, when the ball f dropped about there to Price, yes. he might have just got the break and it finished the other yes. side of the defender. And Arsenal have got to hope to get one of those. Yes. Before we look at it though, Ian, let's just have your. I mean, the favourites just haven't played as favourites yet. They have haven't they? played at all. I mean, they're, they're, Arsenal are just not playing as they have played over the past few months, you know. Now, maybe it's because West Ham are doing well against them, but. I don't think so. I think it's players on the day who are not playing well. The forwards are not playing well. Midfielders, <coughs> you know, the ball's breaking off them. It's very lively out there. It's, it's and the ball seems to be running off them, you know. And the goal, of course, when it came, uh, wasn't entirely a surprise because West Ham had mounted one or two good attacks before then, hadn't they? The down the left hand side. Yeah. They mounted some good attacks down the left hand side. And a bit of pace against Sammy Nelson here, and he, and, he, and he, he just got away from him. The cross, I thought Pat was unlucky there because he wanted to turn it over the bar and drop back into play. It was scrambled about a bit, and I thought the boy went to shoot there, and he shot went across the goals, and, it, and, and, and Brooklyn ducked into it and scored with a header. I think but I think so. you'll find he, he tried to shoot. Oh yeah, I think he tried to shot, Jack. Actually, Crossy was unlucky with the first one, wasn't he? Because he yes, prodded he was. at it. That was he, a nice little... Yeah, he prodded at it, and, uh, but they got the break again, and the second ball was driven across, and Trevor Brooklyn certainly went down to header, didn't he? I mean, he didn't... Uh, it was reminiscent of a famous Ian St. John goal against Leeds. Absolutely right. Actually, it was in 1965. What they about did, they that? didn't know what had happened either. <laughs> <laughs> it was a class goal. Another class goal. Well, well, I tell you, fooled me. I thought it was Stuart Pearson first off in any case. Been a very disappointing final up now, though. Very disappointing. Yeah. Arsenal are... I don't know. Brady in the final last year did very little in the game, but on five or six occasions he came in and stamped his authority on it and won the game. But today he's had a lot of the ball, but never been able to get the use of it properly and get really involved in the in the end of things he's begun yes. because I again Jack I don't think the ball's coming back to him it's, he's it's, finding problems playing off his front men who are, who are normally terrific and he, he's hitting them and there's nothing happening nothing. in fact that, that goal actually came from Sunderland who losing the ball in midfield at the start of a move he lost it they broke away and, and they scored a goal from it we're talking about a lot of things that Arsenal are not doing but we should talk a little bit about the things that West Ham are doing, doing and Billy well. Bonds I think has, has been absolutely well, inspirational at the back they've done terrific I mean Arsenal are playing balls in from the edge of the 18 yard box and, and if you watch West Ham they're pushing out to the penalty spot and they're leaving about 12 yards between the goalkeeper and that and any balls that go into there the goalkeeper's going to take and they're pushing up on the Arsenal forwards and they're not letting them have a header at it in fact, Arsenal have had probably three headers in the game and each one's been under great pressure and the ball's just bobbled past the post with no real power on it. And it's, it's, they're doing it well. And they need to do against Arsenal because if they let Stapleton free with a header or two and or Alan Sullen, they could sink them. Right. Brian Clough says Arsenal, he thinks, will still do it. In a word, what are you two? Well, listening? I think if Arsenal get a, a right telling off in that dressing room and tell to get that... I was going to use the word yeah, Arsenal, don't, don't but I can't. <laughs> and, and, and shift it about a bit and yeah. get out there and, and put the and play as if it's a cup yeah. final, then I think yeah. Arsenal will win. Yeah, I, I still fancy that. If Arsenal get a goal and like go on level, I think they'll win it. Right, a quick break coming up for us, and then we'll see if the lads are right. Stay with us. Chalk, are you kidding? What's this? What's this I'm drinking? It is. Um, what's this that John's drinking? Guinness. And what's this I'm um, pouring out for Jenny? Guinness. Right then. Who won the FA Cup in 1958? Bolton Wanderers. You'll have to move in a bit, love, because them guards don't move much. <laughs> Great, lad. Hey, pal, we do us a favour. Take a photo of me and the missus that I'm uh, Get this one, it's Olympus trip, that. Psycho lens, just like on the OM2. And there's a built-in light meter. Listen, all you have to do is press the button. Go on, anybody can use it. OK. Hey. Oh, you look lovely, aren't you? We're all together. Hang about, hang about. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's very nice. Stay like that. Good, no, good. Head up a bit, darling. That's very nice, dear. Good. No, just that way a bit. Just that way a bit. That's nice. Good. Good pussycat. Hey, that's my film, that. 
Who do you think you are, anyway? David Bailey? Who's he? Come on, look. The Olympus trip. So simple, anyone can use it. Oh, put the television on. It's cricket. When you watch a big Sony colour set, the quality of the picture is astonishingly lifelike. Oh, there's a horror on the other channel. You see, Sony's Trinitron tube is unique because we've specially designed it to produce truer, clearer colour. So your favourite programmes are even more enjoyable. We've seen this one before. What's on the other side, then? Sport is more scintillating, horrors more horrifying, westerns more western. Sony Trinitron. The picture's so real, it's just like being there. How did we get on, then, sir? One quite easily, as a matter of fact. Uh, straight sets? Good idea. Two straight swaps, please. Thank you. <laughs> straight swaps. Ice. Lemon. Nothing but the crisp, sparkling subtlety of tonic brush. You know who. Uh, two of the same, please. Thirsty work, tennis. Right, no, sir, I'm Graham. Dennis left last week. Schweppes. It's great. Straight. Welcome back to Wembley Stadium. To recap, West Ham are winning this 1980 FA Cup final by a goal to nil as we stand at half-time against Arsenal with a goal coming from Trevor Brooking and up in Scotland, Rangers and Celtic. They are drawing nil-nil. of the guards division and I get so many people writing saying let's see a little more of the bands and so we'll do just that for you They get the right sort of enthusiasm instilled in them uh, during that half-time pep talk. Will they yet come out on top? What a good shot there. Two great old campaigners on opposite sides, Pat Jennings and Trevor Brooking. There will be a lot of people, Brian, who would say they wouldn't want to see that. You've got to go out there hating the opposition, but I don't know how you feel about that. I noticed when they walked on to see the pitch at about quarter past two. They were very, very friendly, talking together. Not those particular two, but the whole two sides. And I thought it was a tremendous uh, credit to them. Because when I was coming in, as I said earlier on, the supporters certainly weren't showing an example. And the teams on the field have been unbelievable. In terms of what, of sportsmanship and comradeship? And... The sportsmanship and lack of uh, fouling. There's been a, a physical side to the game, but the referee hasn't broken sweat yet. He's the only one on the field that hasn't broken sweat. He's given a couple of offsides, a couple of infringements, and a couple of his now famous uh, indirects. But apart from that, it's been a magnificent cup final from that angle. Well, for West Ham, it'll be a magnificent cup final if they can hold that one goal lead as we start the second half. West Ham, remember, in the all-white strip. They'll be attacking the goal to our right now. And we shall see just what Arsenal can do in this second half, whether Stapleton and Sunderland will have a better second half, whether enthusiasm will be instilled throughout the side by Terry Neal and Don Howe. That pass from Paul Allen almost leaving Billy Bonds in a bit of trouble there, but the ball coming for Price. And in fact, his clearance had to be a very quick one and not an accurate one. Brady finding Rice, played in first time there. Billy Bonds again at the centre of the action, not getting it away though. 
Price versus Lampard. Devonshire in there as well, taking it outside the penalty area. And Lampard finally woofing it away there towards David Cross. Chested down for Brookie. Played there first time. For Pearson and now for Devonshire. Pearson wanting it back. smoke bomb from the Arsenal end been dealt with by the police Devine Ricks Sunderland a good ball there for Graham Ricks turning Stewart Ricks with a curling shot and that needed to be pushed away a really lovely piece of football there by Graham Ricks the corner about to be taken by Pat Rice as Ricks has his shot turned away loaded in towards the near post where Willie Young is but that was a good jump too by a West Ham defender I'm not sure who it was it was Billy Bonds in fact Talbot being hustled back they're doing a lot of hustling West Ham but in fact that shot by Ricks had to be saved that might have just curled in by momentarily I thought he was going to take the goalkeeper by surprise uh, he was, his angle wasn't quite right Stewart being hustled here by Sunderland got a free kick given to West Ham do you spot a greater enthusiasm about Arsenal and a greater purpose about them in the second half? Uh, certainly determination's crept in in the last five minutes I thought that was a foul on uh, David O'Leary put on Pierce and it was a foul um, and Brady's gone with determination also and obviously that last shot from Young Ricks was a superb effort. Alan playing it back. I'll just make one little more point, Brian. Arsenal do not like this uh, nonchalant knocking around by uh, West Ham. They do it to perfection, and when they get it done to them, they don't like it. No side does. At the side of uh, Sammy Nelson on the bench and the possibility of him coming on, uh, what's your feeling about that? Well, the nightmare that the, the management of Arsenal are living with at the moment. I just I read it. Yeah. Now Billy Bonds is there again, Brian. The nightmare that they're living with at the moment is not only the one nil down. I don't know where they're going to play the lad if he comes on, and that's always a disadvantage. But as I've said, when you have a full back of so. Well, it's West Ham in possession at the moment with Jeff Pike, trying so hard to get away from being pinned back for so long, and Pearson finding Brooking. But being stopped by Brady, who is a new Brady in this second half, there's no question of that, and a long ball forward, Martin's chasing, Stapleton's with him, and Alvin Martin safely back to his keeper. Bonds. Cross. Brooking. All played there towards Pearson. Right on the edge of the box. In fact, there's not even a free kick. It's a goal kick for Arsenal. Any comment, Brian? No, we'll see it here again in a second. I don't think he was touched. Good decision. Brady O'Leary. And they are being either tempted or forced to push a few men further forward now, Arsenal. And Brady is one of them. The shot into the side netting. And certainly uh, Brady looks a different proposition in this second half. Wants to get into the game, but that shot going into the side netting. And the substitute is coming on, and John Devine is coming off. They're substituting one pull back for another, with the exception, of course, that Sammy Nelson is renowned for his ability to come forward and increase the power of attack. Terry Neal giving the young Irishman a pat on the back. And Bonds in turn giving it away, but trying to get it back, and the ball falling for Sunderland. Ricks playing it forward again. That's a nicer looking ball there for Stapleton. Martin's right there with him. Oh, oh. 
and that wasn't a very good clearance there by Stewart. I think he scuffed the turf with it as well. It's Arsenal's throw. It's a real knife edge situation, Brian, now, isn't it? It is, because um, West Ham appear to be hanging on. The longer it goes, obviously, the stronger they'll get. There's still plenty of time to go. And at the moment, it's Sammy Nelson with his first real touch, and it's a throw. It's a good long throw as well there towards Willie Young. Lampard and Martin were both up there. Price trying to turn it back again. Paul Allen getting it away, but not very far. Talbot nicking it in there again. Willie Young and Brady between them trying to make something of it in the end. Uh, Brady goes down, the challenge by Pike and Brooking, and Arsenal now get a free kick right on the edge of that Arsenal penalty, on that West Ham penalty area. So, the West Ham wall has got to be secure and well fought. Fox has got to get a sight of the ball. And looking at it from the other side, and a Brady, Talbot or Ricks have got to do something about it. It looks as though it'll be Ricks playing a short ball to Talbot. With a better angle maybe for him. And a shot beautifully taken by Fox. Well, it was pretty clear what Arsenal intended. Even so, the shot was a good one and the save was even better. With three minutes now to go. Brooking again. Played in here for Allen. And suddenly the gap has opened up for the 17-year-old. Paul Allen. Oh, brought down by Willie Young. And a yellow card comes out for Young. When suddenly Paul Allen saw himself all the way through there. Well, the gap opened up for the youngster. And my word, how well he took it. And then there was that. Followed by the yellow card. Ray Stewart. He's got a direct free kick. Will he get it through the Arsenal wall? He has, but over the crossbar for the corner. And we are now left with two minutes. And look at the animation on that West Ham bench. Get back, they're saying, get back. And the Arsenal people saying, get forward, get forward. And David Cross of West Ham on the edge of that six-yard area. Just wanting that two minutes to go as quickly as they possibly can. Crossed in again, and the flag up. Well, Brian Torbett knows what it is about winning at uh, Wembley. Will today be the first time he faces defeat? It's incredible. There are 15 seconds left, and Arsenal are on the ball still. And the ball floated in once more towards that West Ham penalty. Yeah, it's all over, though! And West Ham have won it! Men are on the field, are on the ground, in fact. Three West Ham players are still on the ground. The joy of the underdogs, West Ham. And now they're getting up, but David Cross is still down. Trevor Brooking was down as well. But Trevor Brooking's goal has brought a victory for West Ham. The underdogs have done it again. And their fans... Devonshire's a delight, and there's the happiest man. That's how does a manager feel at this moment, Brian? And don't you feel pleased for him? He won't know what to say. He won't know. He just honestly, it won't be. It won't be sinking in. It won't be sinking in. It'll take him 10, 15 minutes. It couldn't happen to a more pleasant a guy. Wow, what an amazing thing, Brian Alvin I, Martin. I also know how Don Howe and Terry uh, are feeling. If you could get a view of them. I know cup final is for the winners, but... Yes, but finalists are also somebody has to lose. And uh, the 17-year-old being hugged there by Pat Holland, who was injured and didn't get into the side. Well, that's real tremendous. That's real team spirit. I'm not sure that Pat Holland isn't crying. The 17-year-old, the youngest man ever to play at Wembley, in his first season as a league player, comes away with a cup winner's medal. Bobby Ferguson, the reserve goalkeeper, as well. It's amazing. And when you think of players like Alan Devonshire, who four years ago was playing non-league football for Southall and doing a, driving a forklift tra truck for, a, for the Hoover Company, and Willie Young... Well, it's pure romance, this. 
West Ham will go to collect the cup first. They're followed up by the losers. And the thing, of course, that Terry Neal has got to do now, Brian, is to lift them all for Brussels on Wednesday. A shake of hands from the two managers. See, what's going through the Arsenal lads' minds, Brian, at the moment is that's a year's work up the spout. And Terry Neal, in fact, going to every Arsenal player, getting them up off the ground and saying, come on, chin up. Well, there's no need to say that to this man, Billy Bonds. He was up here in 1975 to receive the cup. And here he comes again. From a Royal Highness, the Duchess of Kent, the Hammers have done it again. Frank Lampard. Ray Stewart, his first year at West Ham. Jeff Pike, who ran and ran and ran. Alvin Martin, who had the nasty collision and a bad eye. Stuart Pearson, who did all this with Manchester United. Well, he's in tears. Poor Paul Allen is crying his eyes out. And his chairman, Len Kearns, there look concerned. There are smiles here from his teammates. But crying his eyes out there, the 17-year-old Paul Allen. Phil Parks, the goalkeeper, the goal scorer, Trevor Brooking, and look at this little man. Well, every mother will weep with him as well. To think when West Ham won this in 1975, he was in his second year as a comprehensive schoolboy. And here he is, Paul Allen. A day and a moment he'll never forget, and he needn't worry about the tears today. What about that, Brian? Incredible sight for the young man. I don't think if he plays in the game another 20 years, I don't think he'll be able to get a better moment than this. And the man who's guided them there, John Lyle. And West Ham will, while Arsenal in fact are getting their losers' medals. It's a sad thing, but it happens every year. As Brian says, Wembley is no place for losers. It's a formality for them and a few cursory pats on the back. But really, eyes everywhere are for these people now. Don Howe shaking the hand of Alan Devonshire in the background, Paul Brush, who thought he was going to play all this week and then had the bombshell yesterday on the left of the picture. And Trevor Brooking of England and West Ham. A loyal West Ham man and the man who has now taken them into Europe with that goal of his. I think they'll want to just look at the photographers as well there. Well, there's the... Just look at that. There's rank upon rank upon rank of photographers. As West Ham, Alan Devonshire. Four years ago, a non-league player with Southall. And happiness at the moment is being a hammer. into Europe and these fellas have got to do a job for British football in Europe on Wednesday night as well and let's hope they do that successfully and uh, David O'Leary has already left the field incidentally David O'Leary has left the field presumably to get to that dressing room if he needs treatment he starts right away but there's the delight as Ray Stewart and Alan Devonshire take the cup around for West Ham. And what a welcome they've got waiting for them at that end of the field. Paul Allen gets his hand on the cup. It's amazing to think he was a schoolboy five years ago and only a young schoolboy at that, 17 years old. And just look at those flags and banners from West Ham. Hard luck, Arsenal, but best wishes for Brussels when they play Valencia. And at the top, congratulations to West Ham United.
Bill Parks, who really didn't, apart from some immaculate handling, didn't really have an awful lot to do in terms of saving shots, except one beautiful free kick from Brian Talbot. Well, the outsiders have confounded the critics, the bookmakers, and everybody else except their own fantastic fans. We all said it had to be Arsenal. In the end, it's turned out to be West Ham. Well, sympathy for them. What a long, long, hard season. I wonder if maybe right at the end, all the effort they put into beating Liverpool, the effort they put into beating Juventus, the effort they've had staying near the top of the first division may, at this most crucial moment of all, just told its, tale, its own tale and just left them wanting that little bit that they couldn't do. Emotional scene after cup finals. It's like as if you've got so much left to talk as long as this. I just like to look and absorb and to feel it all. Um, I'm absolutely thrilled. Well, tell me, not only capturing the Arsenal supporters, but I tell you, what he's applauding there, he's applauding the West Ham supporters, which is a terrific question. I tell you, I shan't forget for a long time the sight of that little boy coming down with tears in his eyes, though. No, it was a, it was a beautiful moment in a cup final. It's amazing what success does, Brian. West Ham could go and play another 90 minutes now. I'm sure they could. He doesn't want to go away. I don't blame him. Well, I think they've got breath to win. They've got breath to do a radio interview as well. Stuart Pearson and young Paul Allen. Right, the players are going off to the dressing room and in a moment we should be talking to them and I hope we get a word with Paul Allen as well. And we should be getting the views of Jack Charlton and Ian St John as outside. The crowds begin to flock away, looking back on another day when the outsiders have beaten the favourites. We'll take a short break, but we'll be right back. Everyone knows motorist discount centres sell rows and rows of oil, touch-up paints, polish, like Sparkrite electronic ignition, twenty nine ninety five, MDC twenty fifty oil, two pound sixty nine, Auto Books workshop manual, one pound ninety nine. But I bet you didn't know they also sell shock absorbers, water pumps, clutch plates, the more specialised car parts and spares for your car, and you get advice from the experts. It's got to be motorist discount centre for all the car care in the world, and they're open till one on Sundays. MDC. Another show over. Time to relax with one of these excellent John Player Mild cigars. 
great value. At just 60 pence for five. Why be dishonest, my dear? It's written on your body. It's written in your mind. You're into something special if you're the Levi's. I see you like whole nut too. Well, cabbies don't use half nuts or crunch nuts, but nuts, hell, hazel nuts. Who cabbies taste come and they cover them in chocolate? <laughs> I said you have the time. Because there will always be the last minute gift. The inevitable extra. Room service, early morning tea, 15 calls to Aberdeen, Scotland. Michael, the car isn't big enough. All right, Anna, all right, we'll get another one. Um, just a moment. The better alternative. Yes, that'll do nicely. The currency problem. There will always be the American Express card. At the better places worldwide, the card looks after everything. American Express. Because you're free from preset spending limits. Tuesday to apply, take a form where you see this display, the American Express card. Don't leave home without it. Welcome back to the stadium. Let's go straight to the interview room now where Martin Tyler has got some of the players with him. Well, I've got to start with the young man we saw in tears just a few moments ago. Paul, there's a smile there now, but how are you feeling? Well, I'm still up, up in the clouds. I still can't believe it. It's just great. <laughs> Those tears really came in floods at the end, though. Yeah, I got a bit carried away at the end there. So. Uh, <laughs> and yet you had so much energy left to make that run through the middle near the end. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. I was, I was struggling near the end, but you know, I just kept going. Bill was getting behind us and that and encouraging us. It was just great. All the lads were great. Bill, it must be a very proud moment for you. Yeah, it's terrific. There's not, not many times you mean you don't get to Wembley uh, once, let alone twice, and it's nice to win two out of two at Wembley. What was the secret of your success today? I think, uh, I feel a little bit sorry for Arsenal because I think they were a little bit tired with the games of uh, Liverpool. It was very hot out there and uh, very hard to play. And uh, I, I think possibly we, uh, you know, the games of Liverpool took their toll against them. But having said that, we, I think we were the better side. Well, you the got day. the goal so early and we can have a look at that now, if you'd like to talk us through it. A break down the West Ham left. I didn't see a lot of it. All I saw was flashed out of Stuart Pearson, I think it was. And, uh, he just, oh, a fact we just saw yeah, a Phil Park was, say, was, but he didn't see a lot of it then. I, I was still struggling up the halfway line, pushing up from a, from a counter attack. <laughs> but it, it did come very, very early in the game. It did. It's what we needed, really. You know, it was, uh, yeah. it, we needed that to probably lift us. And uh, it's, think, just, it's just what we needed. this time now. Yeah. Alan Devonshire doing yeah. so well. I think Alan gets to the byline and crosses it. And Stuart, I think Stuart ends up having a shot at goal. And... And the rebound. We, this is Stuart hitting it now from the rebound. And, uh, Trevor Brooking uh, heading it in uh, from six. Very unusual. Very unusual. What's, the, what's the verdict on a headed goal from Trevor Brooking, lads? <laughs> right, if we move along the line, thanks very much. But Ray Stewart, a first uh, Wembley appearance for you. You must be absolutely thrilled. Oh, it's tremendous. Victory. Winner's medal. First season, it's tremendous. It was seemed to be very sapping out there, though, for, for the players. Yeah, it's warm. The sun was beating down. It's John Lyle's tactics, I think that yeah. proved in the end. And the day of the underdog? Well, as again I told you, underdogs may come through and win. Tremendous. I must say that being with you over the last 24 hours, everyone seemed very relaxed going into this final. The preparation seemed to be right. I mean, you seemed to be in touch with the game right from the start. Well, John Lyle's kept his usual routine. And Eliza's just done the usual thing, so it just shows you what happens. Yeah. We can move along to Alvin Martin. It got a bit of a crack in the eye there. It's all yeah. swelling up. Yeah, big Willie's head, yeah. <laughs> big Willie. Did you? On. You came off the worst for wear. Yeah. At, at the end, I was seen. Couldn't see properly out of it. But Rob put some cold water on it. It was all right then. I was a bit worried, like it was going to go and I had to come off. It was all right in the end. Crazy. An absolutely marvellous day for West Ham. Oh, superb! To win, to win a, a major cup like this, and we're still all quite young, you know. 
Superb, yeah. And Great a great day for the, the central defenders, really, because Arsenal, of course, had a lot of the ball, particularly at the start of the second half. Yeah, uh, well, we knew what, we knew what to expect with them, obviously. We, we, we've seen a lot of them on the telly and that, but uh, we, were, we, we were right going into the game and everything turned out as the way we planned it, really. Yes, yes. Great. Jeff, did you feel that? Did you? I mean, it was obviously a big day for you as well, but everything seemed to settle down very quickly at the start for West Ham. Yeah, I was quite surprised, actually. You know, a lot of lads, I think, felt a lot very nervous at the beginning, you know, and... Uh, but as I say, like we settled down very well, you know, I was very pleased. Um, you know, as I say, went well right from the start. You know, he started knocking it about, which is, and uh, you know, a little technical change bringing Stuart deeper. You know, I think uh, they didn't really know what they whether to mark him or not. You know, and it paid off. And tremendous support for you from from our very loyal fans. <laughs> Terrific. You know, what what can you say? They go all the way to Leeds and Villa and all that. You know, just great, really. Well done, Jeff. Thanks very much indeed. Yeah. Stuart, you've just been mentioned there in a tactical change, dropping a little bit deeper. Was that a, 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 one of the reasons behind West Ham's success? I think so. I think uh, their strength in defence was uh, the two big boys at the back, and they wanted me to just come a little bit deeper and, and try and pull one of them big boys out, but they didn't come, and I was left with a lot of space. Mm -hmm. So I enjoyed it, actually. It was very tiring out there, though. It was uh, the, the heat got to the boys last five minutes. Yes. I think the, I heard the referee say there's seven minutes ago. It's the longest seven minutes ever. Do you think in any way that perhaps Arsenal, with that marathon uh, effort with Liverpool, were a little sapped for the final while you were just sitting back waiting for it to happen? Uh, not really, no, because we had two very hard games against Everton. And um, it's the same for everybody on the day. I think uh, we maybe adapted a little bit better and uh, we was the underdogs. There was a lot of pressure on them today and uh, I think it showed it a little bit. We, we played them on the break very well today and, uh, and we was lucky enough to get the goal. Stuart, thanks very much. A second winner's medal for Frank Lampard. Yeah, fantastic, really. No, but I'm, I'm pleased with the crowd as well. Yeah. You know, they had a funny season really. That league-wise, we didn't quite uh, do our stuff, and I hope we go, we give them something <laughs> back now because uh, they've been a great, you know, great first this year. Well done, Frank. Can I bring Trevor in here and Alan as well? Because all three of you really here with David Cross, all involved in the in the goal. Um, start perhaps with you, Alan, because it was your ball across the face of the goal. Yeah, I just uh, got the ball and uh, went past two. It's and shown it there. Man. That's when Pat Jennings went through his hands, isn't it? Yeah. Dave knocked it. You had a shot. Yeah, yeah, I shot there. I don't think it. Well, I've got to, I've got to ask the man who was here at Wembley yesterday. <laughs> lost every race on the dogs last night and said his luck had to be in today. Trevor. That's right. I knew, I knew something had happened today. <laughs> yeah, look, there's Dave crossing the ball. Now. Yeah, well, Dave yeah. Cross hits it on the half volley. It comes back out. Pencho sees me in the middle there. And a courageous header <laughs> into the middle of the goal. <laughs> it was a haircut. It's not yesterday. too often, with the greatest respect, you find yourself in the six-yard box. No, I do one a year, and actually I hadn't scored this year with my head, so I saved it for today. But no, terrific. I think the whole team played well, and uh, the fans were fantastic, and I think it's a great day for everyone. And uh, I think most of all, we're looking forward to tomorrow when we go through the streets, and then it'll be fantastic. Well done, Trevor. Quick word with Phil Parks, who's just joined us. Hello, Martin. Got the we, got, we got the cut there as well. You can't hold it. I can hold it and the microphone as well. But again, that you'd be very pleased from a personal point of view as well. Yes, yes, very much so. I didn't have a great deal of man work to do. I, I, not as much as I expected, actually. But uh, what I did, I, I thought... There was a stuck. save from Graham Ricks where he really bent one, which perhaps we can have a look at now. That's it, he comes in he inside, comes inside there and just bends it. Yeah, now that seemed to bend an awful long way. It was fantastic, sort of tremendous bend on it, and uh, it's more or less gone past me. I just managed to get my fingers to it. And another save coming up now. Yeah, it's from touch from Brian Talbot. Brian Talbot, yeah. And that one there just sticks. It's those gloves. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone really, and the build-up this morning, everyone was very confident, weren't they, Philip? And it, and it just went perfect. It was, Martin. Yeah, every, everything about it. Uh, I don't. I've never been involved in one before, so I can't really compare. But it was so calm and everyone as you say confident I mean they even went to the dogs last night had a little flutter on the yes, dogs and I believe it's a little story that you didn't go oh but, uh... <laughs> yes I, I didn't go and made them all envious because I gave Alan Devonshire who's in a purple patch at the moment on the field on, and the, on, on, the, on the field and at the dogs yeah and um, I gave him 20 pounds he, he put me back 63 so that was quite a nice uh... so it's been a marvellous weekend really the only thing that spoiled it I said I lost at Domino's which <laughs> <laughs> spoiled my dream I don't think the viewers realise but Domino's is very serious for West Ham oh it is it? yes yes like cards is to most teams we, we've got our Domino's squad and uh, we really take it serious and this of course is very serious as well oh yeah it's beautiful yeah. absolutely lovely ok Phil well thanks very much that's all from down here let's go back to Brian well, uh, the three gentlemen here who felt at half-time, I think, along with all of us, that Arsenal couldn't be as bad in the second half and would pull it round and win. 
But they didn't do that, Jack. No, they didn't, and it's down to Alvin Martin and Billy Bonds. I felt that I've never seen little Brady work as hard and have as much of the ball and play as many balls into the edge of the box uh, for Stapleton and uh, Alan Sunderland and get nothing from it. You know, and these two closed it down, pushed out at him and didn't give him an inch to move in and uh, I think West Ham with them a debt of gratitude that have won the cup. Yes. I gather we've got John Lyle down in the interview room. Before we go to him, Brian, I'm sure you'd, uh, you'd like to pass on a message to him, wouldn't you? To John? Yeah. Absolutely magnificent, John. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Fantastic result for you. It was a rotten cup finding, but it was a magnificent <laughs> result. <laughs> well, John, let's have your reaction. Well, obviously the best day in the history of West Ham Football Club, and that's a marvellous thing. Really? That's, oh, it must be. It must rank as the best performance. I mean, we've taken on one of the best club sides probably in Europe, and uh, we've beaten them 1-0, and uh, you can't do any more than that in this game. Take on the best and beat them. You've all been saying the right things all week about uh, preparing and, and things like that, but how confident were you deep down? I always think if you've got a team of players who can pass the ball and they've uh, got knowledge and the right ideas about the game, you can create an upset, which we did today. You know, we, we came here basically, uh, I said to the lads before the game, no one thinks we've got a chance and that's the way I like it in life. I love a challenge and so do the players and uh, we had the right attitude and commitment and we did the did it we did everything right i couldn't have written it better myself and a great day for for some of the great west ham players in terms of uh, loyalty and commitment billy bonds and, and trevor brooking right at the center of your win well the nicest part of the day or the the whole occasion for me i just stood at the tunnel near the end there and the lads were holding the cup aloft and the supporters were giving us their usual vocal support and i thought well one couldn't ask for any more than that you've got a great lot of lads and you've got the best supporters in the world what more can any manager ask for and to win the cup with a Trevor Brooking header? Yeah, well, we must be doing a fair job. If we can get him to score with a header, we must be working on the right things. And big celebrations planned for tomorrow? Yes, yeah, it'll be marvellous to drive round because, as they say, that's, that's going home, isn't it? And the East End people are always a bit special and yes. they've helped us through the bad times and uh, they deserve their little bit of joy and, and bit of happiness tomorrow. Well, I'm delighted to say that we'll be there with you tomorrow, John. Thanks very much and many congratulations Thanks to you. Much. Back to Thank Brian. Yes, in fact, that's at 2.30 tomorrow afternoon. We shall see that West Ham homecoming. Well, it's a question now of Arsenal lifting themselves for Wednesday. And I noticed that David O'Leary went off right at the end. You pointed it out to me, Brian, that, uh, that he might be a little bit dodgy, I would have thought. Well, he couldn't get off quick enough, and it was, that game was over. And I would, I would say now, it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, yes. just preparing. Yes. So. Ian, a quick word from you on, on the Arsenal well, performance. I thought the Arsenal performance was very poor, and I felt sorry for Liam Brady, because I thought Brady... Played terrific, and uh, but he was battling alone there today. There was a lot of players around him who didn't perform as they can do. Had Arsenal played, they would have won the game. But I think West Ham winning is a people's choice. Everybody wanted West Ham to win, and it's nice for them, isn't it? And Trevor Brooking, who I admire greatly, Trevor Brooking, I was delighted for him. Yes, because uh, there was a certain difference of opinion about his capabilities. Yeah, well, 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 I mean that's what the game is about, opinions, about isn't opinion. it? You know, I, I like uh, the boy. I think he's a very skillful player. And I was hoping today that, that he was going to perform, and I thought he did perform. I thought he had a quiet spell, sort of, latter half of the first half, but in the second half, his experience came in, he was getting yes. it, knocking it around, holding it up when it needed holding up. And funny enough, Pearson played well too up yes. front, and uh, he's playing a little bit deeper there, as he said, and I thought he did well. We've, we've heard what the West Ham players have had to say, but I gather we can now go to the interview room again to get some views from Arsenal. Yeah. Well, Graham Rex and Alan Sunderland have very kindly joined us. Graham, the simple question is really, what went wrong for Arsenal? Well, I think we had a, about 80% possession, but we never created one real chance that I can remember, you know. Just one of them things. Good luck to West Ham, you know. <sighs> Bit choked, but... It's a <laughs> feeling, of course, something. that you and, and Alan have both been through before with the Ipswich defeat. Is it even worse than that, Alan? No, I don't think so. Uh, you know, because, because we've been there, this is the third time, so, you know... I'm not saying it makes it any easier, but I don't think it's as bad as then. We played not as well as we can, but, but they, got the, they got a good early goal when they needed it, and sort of that gave them the initiative. It made us, we had to come out and sort of attack them more. But as Graham said, we never really created one clear-cut chance. Where did they really deny you? Was it that their central defenders both seemed to play very well? Uh, you know, a bit hard, wasn't it? We had to make runs and things like that, wasn't it? You know, it was... I don't think you can put your finger on it. We just... You know, they played well. Let's not take anything away from West Ham. They knocked it back there, the footballing side. 
they sorted Wembley. We we sort of didn't probably knock it about and didn't well. We knocked it about quite well, but we didn't sort of create anything round the box. We never sort of myself, especially I wasn't sharp round the box. I didn't create anything. And as I said, we never created one clear cut chance. Well, you're not now in guaranteed a European place, which I know is so important to Arsenal and to, and to you. What are your feelings now with the Cup Winners' Cup final coming up on Wednesday, Graham? Well, Don's just been jeering us all up in there, you know, saying get together. You did what you could, it's just one of them things. Get ready for Wednesday night now, so obviously we'll be bombing Wednesday night, I hope. What was the dressing room like, Alan? <laughs> Obviously disappointed, but as you say, we've got to sort of start now geeing ourselves up to uh, for Wednesday and make sure we do it on Wednesday. Make sure we put in a better performance than we did today and make sure we come back with a cup. Might see him next year in cup winners' cup now. <laughs> you've, uh, you've come back from the dead so often in matches this season. Did you feel as the second half wound on that you were going to make it this time or was it always going to be a little bit beyond you? Yeah, sometimes we tend to need, especially when we're the favourites, we tend to need a bit of a kick up the backside. And I thought, well, that early goal might just do us a bit of good. But as it happens, it didn't the first half, but the second half we came out and I thought we, with a bit of luck, we might have snatched one early on in the second half. But as it, as it kept going, I thought, well, it's drifting away from us. But the, the spirit in this side the last few months has been tremendous. And I thought we were always capable of maybe just snatching one. But today it wasn't to be, you know. The substitution to bring Sammy Nelson on to work things more down your left-hand side, Graham? Yeah, well, I thought we were getting quite a bit of joy down the left, actually. Uh, we weren't really eating the dead ball line much, but, you know, we were getting it into Sunday's feet and that. Uh, I don't know why Terry made the substitution, you know. He obviously thought Sammy would give us that bit of experience when we needed it. Well, lads, thank you very much for coming up to talk to us in your disappointment. Now let's go back to Brian. Of course, one of the favourite games people play after cup finals is to pick their man of the match. Brian, if you had to do that, would you have any difficulty doing it? I wouldn't. I thought Billy Bonds was absolutely outstanding from start to finish. And a vote of thanks should go to Bert Millerchip, the West Brom chairman, because he allowed him, kind permission of Bert Millerchip, that he could play at Wembley with his 20 disciplinary points. But having got that reprieve, if anybody ever dipped the bread, uh, Billy did. He was absolutely superb. <laughs> And his enthusiasm, let alone his competitive uh, spirit throughout the game, rubbed off on everybody. It makes the brookings of this world, Ian, absolutely on song. Because somebody's got to get it for them. Yes, and sure. Billy's, um, as I've said, competitive spirit, involvement in everything, up, down. Last five minutes, he was heading down yes, the left flank in the, in the corner flag, crossing a ball, yeah. when everybody was dead on the halfway line. All right. Lovely. Brian, thanks for joining us today. Jack, Ian, it's good to work with you again. <laughs>
Well, the mood is really a very optimistic mood. They're not sitting back and talking about tiredness, which has already been mentioned in the studio. It is Arsenal's 68th game of the season, which is an enormous lot. But that's all in the mind. Football isn't really a, a game of yesterday's or tomorrow's. It's, a, it's all about today, about what they do tonight. And uh, Don Howe and Terry Neal haven't allowed them any time to be morbid about the uh, what happened on Saturday. And uh, the reaction is very positive at the moment. News also that Uli Hernes, the general manager of Bayern Munich, will be in the stadium tonight to watch Liam Brady, whose name appears on an Arsenal team sheet, perhaps for one of the last times before his expected departure to the continent. The Arsenal team is the one that finished the cup final with Sammy Nelson at number three and David O'Leary having passed a fitness test on that calf injury. Indeed, away to my right, the Arsenal team making their entrance and Valencia coming from the left. The teams here come from opposite ends of the stadium and number nine in the picture, the famous Mario Kempis, the man who lit up Argentina in the World Cup finals two years ago. He, Pat Rice leading out the Arsenal side. Just to give you an idea of the rules tonight, in case this match should end in a draw, let me say right away, it has to be settled tonight. There will be extra time first off, and if it's still level, then the final of the European Cup Winners' Cup will be settled on penalty kicks. A beautiful evening, as I said, and a tremendous atmosphere inside this Heysel Stadium where West Ham played in the Cup Winners' Cup Final. I'm sure Trevor Brooking needs no reminding of that four years ago when they lost to Anderlecht. Arsenal wearing yellow again as they did on Saturday. Slightly different style shirts incidentally. A word on the shirts, Bob? Well, uh, it is hot here again in Brussels, although happily there's a, more of a breeze than there was at Wembley, where I believe the temperature was measured at around 80. But these shirts are specially designed and have a, a sweat-absorbent interior, in fact, to them. So uh, they're hoping it will help anyway. They had one scare earlier today when UFA at first decided this morning that yellow and white would not mix and that Arsenal would have to wear their traditional red. And I gather a set of red shirts was hastily dispatched from Highbury on the plane carrying the players' wives to Brussels. But finally UFA relented and permitted Arsenal to play in yellow shirts and blue shorts. And Arsenal's 27th cup tie. And as Frank Stapleton may well reflect, of those 68 matches, Arsenal have lost, or well, the previous 67 anyway, Arsenal have lost just 10. And now the supreme test as to whether they will finish the season with a major trophy. After the disappointment of Saturday, Pat Jennings prepares for the European Cup Winners' Cup final on a ground where even he, in his long and illustrious career, has never played before. Alan Sunderland waiting in the centre circle because Arsenal will be playing in the first half from right to left. And away we go for the final of the European Cup Winners Cup 1980. And here's Liam Brady on the ball for Arsenal. And the first foul is by Kempis. to push Willie Young forward Sunderland here's Sammy Nelson Graham Ricks nice ball Sunderland gone off for Valencia foul there as he ran but the referee wave play on that was a tackle by Sunderland Bonoff tends to take the throw-ins and the free kicks oh he's found Kempis good save and Arsenal caught out at the throw-in and Kemp has given the kind of space from which he scored so many goals and denied then only by the Arsenal goalkeeper played back for Ricks to shoot it hit his own player Stapleton Talbot turns it back to Nelson Stapleton well forward, Price is there, it's Torbert! Strikes the defender, it's still free though. O'Leary. Stapleton's up! Oh, and taken out by the defender, Torete on the line. David 
twice as injured in an earlier incident. But Stapleton was so close, and you'll see how close from this. Karate, the fullback, saved his goalkeeper. That's Karate following up. And Karate left his foot there a little bit. You can see the reaction of Sammy Nelson. Now, Karate was first in with the foot there. And I think the referee may feel he's overreacting to the alleged retaliation because these Spaniards are regarded as very good actors. Whistle's gone. And the linesman has come onto the pitch thinking that it's half-time. I'm not too sure that the referee had blown for half-time. But the player's coming off anyway with no score after 45 minutes of this European Cup Winners Cup Final and a half-time comment from Bob Wilson. Well, I'm sure that uh, even through my Arsenal coloured eyes, everyone will agree that they have played very, very well in this first 45 minutes. They've had the edge, I think, and although the real chances have been one all, that is the one that Jennings saved from Kempes and the one that uh, Garete knocked off the line from Frank Stapleton, Arsenal are getting men to the uh, goal line. They are pulling the ball back well, and they're looking the most dangerous side. Uh, uh, as regards the opposition, I think the, the man who's uh, really the biggest threat of all is not Kempes up on off but Solsona number six a real workhorse Valencia in all white playing now from right to left and Arsenal gave their supporters a wave as they came out for the second half and the terrace away to our right was suddenly a mass of red and yellow flags the referee Briskov from Czechoslovakia just checking his watch and Valencia get the second half underway the ball with Karate That was Sammy Nelson's header to Brady, and now it's Ricks. Stapleton. And Ricks again. Header away by Arias. Brady. This is Stapleton. Defender is Tendilio, the teenager. Solsona now for Valencia. Pablo Kempis against O'Leary. Good play by O'Leary. It's a supreme test for him, this marking Kempis. A match in which he dearly would love to do well, and he's doing so under the handicap still of that lingering injury. This is Brady pieces of individual skill we've seen initially there by Rixey won the ball and then here he is again doing the same he's found Stapleton this time can he find Price? he can Price shoots well I think Arsenal deserved the shot on goal there after the work Ricks had done and David Price volleyed it with his right foot and as Pereira went across his line the ball dropping the wrong side of the post for Arsenal he to motivate and try and put things right. Here's Brady. Brady shot! Oh, he saved it! Carrera turning it round. And Brady there went inside his man and it was on his left foot as he picked up pace and Carrera came to his left. To make and yours too there from Solsona. Beautifully done. Plays the ball down for Bonoff. Bonoff is through here with Kempis just inside him. It's Bonoff gone all the way. And Jennings saves. It's through Pat Jennings style. Threw himself down and got out of the legs or the body in the way. But Reiner Bonoff, a player of his quality. I wonder whether he should have scored. It's easy to say that from here. But he was clean through it. But the angle wasn't good. And Jennings came to narrow it anyway on the post the six yard line he fell Pat Jennings and again it nearly went through his legs but not quite as Candelio got his foot in there Brady cut it back for Ricks to shoot it was going wide and out again oh what a good effort so close as Young came in at the far post there with Sunderland that was the nearest Arsenal have been with his left foot and it flew across the face of the goal and as Sunderland came in it was so so close and the 
crowd beginning to settle themselves down, thinking it'll be extra time, but this is Torbett for Arsenal. Torbett for Stapleton. And now for Pat Rice. And now for Liam Brady. And this whistle's gone. Extra time. Resuscitation of all types now. And Arsenal and Valencia go into the extra half hour. Solsona. Solsona shot. Good effort by this industrious midfield player. Kempis drives one and it was bending but not enough. On the right hand side of the penalty area they use Kempis to try and bend them with his left foot round the wall, round the goalkeeper. This is Rice. Big Willie Young is up there stretching. Following up is Ricks. On this side is David O'Leary. And Sunderland tries to get in. Stapleton this is. O'Leary. Sunderland no. No. Offside. Offside when the ball was originally played to O'Leary. No goal. David O'Leary in the attack. Trying to bend the ball in. But he was offside there when he crossed the ball. Before Alan Sunderland ran in and finished things off. Yet again. And he's going to blow any second here, he has, and it's penalties. And Pat saved it! Oh, Pat Jennings has saved from Kempis! What a start for Arsenal! He took it with his famous left foot, and Pat knew which way it was going to go! And what a save! But don't forget, this is just the beginning of the competition. Brady against Pereira. taken in my view from here but you can argue about that yourselves Solsona then against Jennings a goal struck with all the venom of a man who knew he was going to score Daniel Solsona oh he hammered that and Jennings even then threw himself to his right but it flew into the net above him here Stapleton Puts it away. So it's one all. Stapleton with his right foot. The goalkeeper made another good attempt to save that actually. Pablo. And Pablo scores to make it 2-1. And put the pressure back on Arsenal. And I think Alan Sunderland. Pablo is a left-footed player. And he beat Pat Jennings down in his right-hand corner. Sunderland Goal Pereira moved again as a matter of fact But it's in I think this goalkeeper's moving all the time from these Anyway It's a goal It's 2-2 two -two. Castellanos against Jennings. Oh, it was in on the other side of the bar, I think. I think it actually probably went in off the other side here. Castellanos making it 3-2 to Valencia. And it went in off the other side of the bar. A bit fortunate, maybe. But Brian Torbert under immense pressure here. Torbert for Arsenal. Oof. When it went in. Now then, it's going to be 3-3 three, three with one each to take. And Reiner Bonhoff, as we see Torbert's penalty go in again there, he put it right in the corner, didn't he? Keeper went near it again, though. Valencia into a 4-3 lead, and there's pandemonium on the touchline. 
Gone off now. Scores. And Hollins must score to keep Arsenal in the competition. Bonhoff has made it 4-3 to Valencia, and if John Hollins misses, then Arsenal have been beaten. But if he scores, then other players have got to be recruited from the bench to continue the competition in sudden death fashion. John Hollins, after all these years in the game, and Paul Barron, no wonder he looks concerned. greater pressure than that and now we're 4-4 and it's sudden death in other words the, the actual competition is over but it's square so now each side will go on taking them until somebody misses different players each time still but of course even if you miss the other side must have the chance to put theirs away and vice versa it's got to be an equal number taken by each team and centre back Ricardo Arias This is sudden death now, it's a question of each side taking one until somebody misses with the even number of kicks taken. Arias! Oh, it just went in underneath Pat Jennings, I think. Or well, perhaps just to one side of him. To see it again here. Arias hit it with his right foot a little bit nervously, I thought. But as Jennings goes to the right, it does in fact go just by his arm. So, Graham Ricks has to score to keep Arsenal alive. If he misses, Valencia win. That's why Arsenal, taking their penalties second, are under greater pressure until Valencia miss another one. Graham Ricks, as Paul Barron watches again, the one or two of them actually who uh, don't really want to watch this. But now Ricks. Oh, he saved it! And Valencia have won the Cup Winners' Cup because Graham Ricks' penalty was saved by Carlos Pereira. And the Valencia players go wild with delight. We lost it, so I'm just as much to blame as the people who took the penalties and didn't score, you know, because we're all part of the team, and what we say is there's no I in team. You know, we're all in it together. I think by the time the West Ham game came around and the Valencia game a few days later, we just lost our edge. So that's my excuse, and I'm sticking by it. <laughs>
70 games that season. Magnificent season. We ended up winning nothing. 